what's going to happen today. 15 two-year-olds here have a chance to run for the most money they've ever run at here at the Magic Millions. Hi, Richo, and hi, Leah. Hercules. Highness Wolfgang Vianara, the list goes on. Then we get to the fillies. An Arabian, Arabian summer, summer is yeah. one of the main fillies. Erno's cube as well. There's a, a group of fillies. Either of two ways with Storm Boy, and at the moment it's getting out a little bit in price. There's still the majority of money going that direction. Highness has been popular. Arabian summer, much the same could be said. Punters, not entirely sure, and I wouldn't say launching into Storm Boy with a lot of conviction. Spywire, six out to seven dollars fifty. Erno's cube is a firm couple of weeks. A poster girl at twenty six dollars. VNR of forty one, and we're talking eighty one or more. The rest. All clear. Set, they're off and racing. Storm Boy was midfield into stride. Highness left brilliantly from Arabian Summer. Storm Boy's working up on the outside. Wolfgang just off those. Then followed by Mashani Ego off the track. Erno's cube locked sixth one off. Then followed Spy Wire next the inside spirited. Further back to Mashani Aloha. Poster girl Jenny's Meadow. Two lengths away Territory Ash. Then followed She's a Chikatita Vianara. Mashani Express is last of all. It's Mashani Ego in front. A neck clear from Storm Boy inside the 600. A length and a half away, Arabian Summer. Highness has had a gun run in transit. Erno's Cube sliding forward, then followed by Wolfgang Spywire. Next, Mashani Aloha. Poster Girl, Jenny's Meadow. A long way back, Spirited Territory Ash. Mashani Ego topping the straight. Storm Boy struck the front. Arabian Summer in the clear. Likewise, Highness getting through in the middle. Erno's Cube and Spywire out wider. It's Storm Boy in front, 100 metres left to run. Highness Carpenter back the margin, then spy wire, but it's all Storm Boy, and Storm Boy is too good for them in the two-year-old. Storm Boy by three, second highness, photo third, spy wire or Erno's cube, Arabian Summer clocks in five, the first Philly home, then Territory Ash, next Jenny's Meadow, further back, Mashani Aloha, poster girl, Mashani... OK, you were so clever taking that horse to that place that day, aren't you? So the queen of Australian racing world, racing wins the fifth. Adrian gets his first. Hippo with two group ones already this season. Gets a Magic Millions classic. Justify Sire's one. Do you know what, Lizzie? We've seen one of the best winners ever of a Magic Millions classic. Could not agree with you more. That was absolutely breathtaking. He had every opportunity to get beaten and he didn't. It was a great ride from Adam Hieronymus. He was able to sort of position himself just inside the speed and then he was able to go forward and try and give his horse a brief. Either. But I think in the end, Bruce, this horse was just way too good. His turn of speed over the concluding stages was absolutely breathtaking. And I tell you what, this horse, we've only seen three horses go on and win a Golden Slipper. He's well in contention after that performance. I reckon he'll be favourite tonight. I reckon he'll be favourite for the Golden Slipper tonight. He'll take it off his stable, mate. And Joe, that was special. That was really something. And you have got Gay with you. Well, Gay, I need to chat to you. The journey has been fantastic. Gay bought Storm Boy out to a pub. And, uh, and I'm out to the pub. We loved him. We all whipped around. We bought into the horse, and it's been the journey of a lifetime. And by G, he was closes to a half point. A bounding 750 out of $9.50. So there's a couple of point drift for that runner. Number 13, Royal Tribute, 950 to 10. VC, $26 the open. Bottomed out at $10, now 12. Vanquished at $17, trimmed in from a peak of 26. And then you have Weigel Tiger and Co at 19. Um, he, he reared up and got his leg caught between the gates, you know, so then ended up in a really compromised position. So, um... Productions, 13 by 12 with Sydney Bowler coming out, and we do have a new favourite, naturally, with Cry Say All now a clear favourite. The best-backed runner, interestingly, is VC, or the biggest firmer, I should say. The majority of money is on... ...to us. The crowd set, gates are back, and they're off and racing Good in work, the three-year-old guineas. Pure paradise. Missed the start a good two lengths. Royal Tribute left fast. Straight to the front from Weagle Tiger. Sovereign Fun pressing forward. Vanquished on their outside. Trifling settles down around fifth. And then followed by Defiant Spirit next. The King in the middle. VC's in that clump of runners. A length and a half away. Infatuation. Zooforia. Chrysaor. Then followed by Flying Trapeze. Sunset Dreaming. Sofrado second to last. And two lengths away. Pure Paradise. Last of all, it's Defiant Spirit up on the outside of Royal Tribute inside the 750. Vanquished in third.
third, Sovereign Fun fourth, the King on a wide passage to fifth, then Weagle, Tiger, VC, a bounding tucked away on the rail, Chrysor picking up in the centre, Infatuation, further back to Trifling, Flying Trapeze, Sunset Dreaming, Zuforia, Pure Paradise, Safrado's last, home quarter, 4.25 to go, Defiant Spirit in front, three quarters clear, Royal Tribute in second, Vanquish next, the King runs on, Sovereign Fun behind those, then Trifling, Chrysor all with plenty to do. Weagle Tiger out wider on the track with a bounding. 200 metres left to run. Defiant Spirit. Royal Tribute. Sovereign Fund. A bounding closing out wider. Sovereign Fund. A bounding. A bounding over the top. A bounding. A bounding wins the three-year-old guineas. Beat Sovereign Fund and Flying Trapeze. Fourth a camera. Pure Paradise jumped up out of the ground. Trifling Royal Tribute. Sofrado. Sunset Dreaming and just got there. Yeah, $75,000 purchase from this uh, Magic Million sale by Rob Heathcote and First Light Racing. That will be Martin Harley's, one of his lot of money into racing. And they've got another feature winner for their owners. They sure have. So Gary Portillo. Tough one to pick here. 450 the field, but plenty on the outside that I expect will still have some room to move. Hey, Yusugi is still your favourite. $4.50 but plenty in this one that are well interested. Well, look, I'm looking for uh, the two-year-old that looks like uh, the thousand-metre horse, uh, something quick, and Hey Sugi was uh, the horse that ticked those boxes. I think she's... Five minutes since we last spoke. Opened at $10 with us here at Sportsbet, now into $4.60. So a really, really strong push there for Jane's second elect market mover. Hey Sugi, out to $5 now from $3.30. Not too popular. Ready, Gates back racing. Where's Brittany towards the outside away pretty well? To be or not to be was the best to break. And led, where's Brittany by a length onto the course proper? She hung the moon not far away from Mind Shift, then Cool Star. Matisse on the rails, and then came Hayasugi. Bella on a second last. And at the end of the field is I Only Wish, 600 to go. To be or not to be, and next she hung the moon. A length and a quarter, where's Brittany? Matisse and Mind Shift behind those fillies. A length and a quarter, Hayasugi, Bella Corazon from Cool Star and two lengths away to I Only Wish. 400 to go. To be or not to be from She Hung the Moon. Where's Brittany? Three wide. Matisse tracks up behind the leader. Then Mind Shift trying to get into the clear and Hayasugi the outside. To be or not to be at the 200 metres. She Hung the Moon still three quarters of a length off her. Then came Matisse and Hayasugi the outside. To be or not to be. 100 to go. Hayasugi wearing her down. To be or not to be and Hayasugi photo finish. Photo finish. Hay Hayasugi, or to be or not to be, Matisse third, followed then by She Hung the Moon and Mind Shift from Bella Corazon, Cool Star, where's Brittany? And at the tail of the field, I only wish Hayasugi putting in a bound to be or not to be, he's put their head down just before the line, but you'd think, having a look at the slow mo, that Hayasugi will nail her, and she does. Number one, Hayasugi, Jamie Carr for Clinton McDonald. It wasn't to be, but it was a good effort nonetheless from the daughter of Pierrata on debut for Griffiths and de Kock. But for the first time in a couple of years, we see a filly with race experience under the belt getting it done in the blue dot. Time will High Octane's going to get that chance right now. $2.30 out to $2.80. One. 0.05 million. Not too cheap this one. High Octane, your favourite at $2.80. Inner Visions, $6 into $4. Colts and Gelding, some of them with a fairly hefty price tag attached. Well, I've gone with the one on top in Blue Strata, again, race experience, and I think he's come back uh, a little bit more professional this time round. I preferred his fresh-up parade today than what I did when I saw him on debut. He's on... I said earlier, the last two races have been won by drifting favourites, so no alarm bells if you are on the favourite here. Still the best back in this race. Very popular. Inner Vision, Six dollars into three dollars eighty is just begin to tick in. Stand by, racing. High octane away fairly. Homes are caught the best to begin with Blue Stratum and also Inner Visions. Cap 10 settles behind them in fourth on the rails. Then let's face the music and high octane. A couple of lengths to Wonder Step and then Lima Hooli. And last of all, Espino. 700 metres to run. Inner Visions is the leader. By a neck, Homes are caught. A length and a quarter. Cap 10 up on the steel and Blue Stratum deeper. Let's face the music. Fifth one off the fence. And they were followed by High Octane, who has it back to follow. Four off the 
the front. They're two lengths, Lima Hooli, and then one to step and Espino as they run the corner. 400 metres to go. It's Inner Visions held together by a length. Holmes Accord, Blue Stratum, Captain under pressure. High Octane brought to the middle, three to pick up. And then let's face the music. Inner Visions at the 200 metres from Holmes Accord. High Octane is running on now on the outside under the persuasion of the whip. High Octane drifts in on the inside. Holmes Accord kicks, but High Octane a little bit wayward, but too good. High Octane, three quarters of a length. Holmes Accord, a gap. Inner Visions, let's face the music. Then Espino, Blue Stratum. Further back was Lima Hooli. Then came Wonder Step and Cap 10. The two high price Colts, one out of the English Easter sale, the other out of the Magic Man's Gold Coast sale, flying the flag for the likes of the China Horse Club, Newgate, and. And they're racing at the 1200 metres. And Brave Me towards the rails beat them out clearly with Stepati the outside and Carbonados isn't too far away. And they get away in the early stages from Amigo and then Centify and King Colorado last at the 950. Stepati happy to sit outside of Brave Mead onto the course proper. Stepati just overdoing it a little bit. They're a length and a half Carbonados and they were followed by Centify Amigo and King Colorado last as Brave Mead is going to lead now. So with 650 metres Meters to go. It's Brave Mead, three quarters of a length to party, who settled a lot better. Two and a quarter Carbonados, and they were followed by Centify, who's under the whip early. Then came Amigo and King Colorado as Brave Mead tried to steal it on the corner. 400 metres to go. Brave Mead left the fence and led by over two lengths to party. Then came Carbonados, and next in the field is Centify, who runs on. But the leader, Brave Mead, 200 to go. Still had two and a half to party. Centify, and then King Colorado from a long way back. Brave Mead, 100 metres to go, getting a little bit weary, but is going to return a winner. Brave Mead, a length King Colorado, a terrific run and third to party. They were followed by Amigo, Centify and Carbonados last. Blake, congratulations. The... At wait for age, first run in March 1988, Moved back into the January time slot since 2002. Became a Group 2. The Group 2 Australia Stakes kickoff point for the calendar year for many a good horse. I really like the favourite here, V8. As I said, he might have been bred to get out to a mile, but he certainly looks like a sprinter. And when you watch him wander around the yard, he's a ball of muscle. Good spread of money, actually, the top three. Coming in late from Sports Bet Betters. And we're looking at recommendation. She's tightens up again to $3.20 here. Ma Eustace are on fire. Johnny Allen already ridden a winner. And Southport Tycoon, the, the price of $14 went up. And when punters go for the Group 2 Australia Stakes. Racing at the 1200, Southport Tycoon missed the kick a length and a quarter. Curran goes back with it. Beginning well was Snapper struck by and recommendation used up from the wide alley. V8 fourth on the outside, followed by Zathus and then Southport Tycoon who got past Crosshaven and Curran early. On that opening corner at the 850, the leader Snapper by a neck recommendation, two lengths struck by, a length and a quarter Zathus and they were followed by V8, one off the fence in fifth place and four off the lead, tracked by the other three year old Southport Tycoon who's keen then Crosshaven Curran by the school at the 600. Snapper just in front of recommendation struck by continues to pour it on three wide. A length and a half to V8 who's nice and close and they were followed by Zathu Southport Tycoon Curran and Crosshaven. Recommendation took the front before the corner at the 300 metres. Kick for home. Two lengths in front of struck by V8 Zathu and Southport Tycoon to the outside. Recommendation 150 metres to go Two legs in front of V8 Southport Tycoon. Recommendation folding up. V8 is gobbling it up. V8 in the middle lifts and wins. V8 first from Southport Tycoon. Recommendation Crosshaven. Then Curran. Next in the field, Sathu struck by last snapper. For the second straight year, it's a favourite Australia stakes, but only just relief. Did in the end from the other three year old in Southport Tycoon who's missed the kick and got home very hard for Craig Williams, Kieran Maher and Dave Eustace. They get a stakes placing on their final four, it's going to look like from here. Plenty to take out of this year's edition of the Australia Stakes. They've run 109.64, a short neck by a head.
ready and racing. Coleman and Anisa both jumped well with Scampi and counter offensive being used up out wider on the course to lead the race outright. After 200 metres, counter offensive, the leader from Coleman followed by Evaporate the inside. Scampi second last, Anisa last of the five. Counter offensive, a length and a quarter, Coleman. A length away, Evaporate third on the inside at the 600 metres, a little bit erratic. And then came Scampi and a length and three quarters, Anisa coming up to the turn. Counter offensive, stole two lengths coming up towards the 450. Coleman second, then came Evaporate, Scampi and Anisa with a bit to do. Counter offensive, the first to straighten. 300 metres to go. Two and a half lengths in front of Coleman, given its head now, and they were followed next by Scampi and Anisa. Counter offensive with Coleman coming at it hard. Coleman lets down, races away, and he's a late, but it's all Coleman. And Coleman, far too impressive, two and a half lengths, and he's a counter offensive third. And then came Evaporate and Scampy last. Ben Mellum joins Craig. Um, very good colt, really, I think. Um, still putting it all together, but he's going to be scary when he does. I imagine you would, you would think. racing in the last and Jimmy Starr was a little bit flat-footed was the last to leave with Japanese Emperor Imperial lad fired out as it usually does from Elkington Road and who dares is right there they were followed by along the inside Magnus spin and also Forbidden City Jimmy Starr recovers through the field and got to sixth a link about two lengths away Forbidden City Jimmy Starr would be sixth one off the fence and five off the front from Brung King then ton of grit conqueror last Japanese Emperor Imperial lad approaching the 600 metres, a length in front of Who Dares, then Magnus Spin and 4th Elkington Road, three quarters Forbidden City, Jimmy Starr still six off the lead from Brung King, Ton of Grit Conqueror, and last of all, Japanese Emperor. Imperial Lad runs the corner at the 425, tried to kick away from Who Dares, Elkington Road, now Jimmy Starr has been brought to the middle of the track, Shin hasn't pushed the button yet, he's like a statue at the 250, and Jimmy Starr slid up to Who Dares, who's full bore, now he goes for Jimmy Starr, one slap, two slaps, it's two in front of Who Dares, and Jimmy Starr's going to power away. This is a nice horse. Jimmy Starr won it well from Who Dares and Forbidden City. Fourth a photo, Imperial Lad. It's a horse to follow and clearly heading for stakes races. How quickly will be the question we'll pose to Kieran Murray in a moment. For are tricky to line up with a few resuming stars in the making and already stars, of course, in the likes of Tom Kitten. But Moravia is the one the punters have come for late. 480 into 360, and he has one-third of the whole. Yeah, there it is now, and they're off and racing. Boy, Griff jumped well. Moravia, the outside, is going to second, and Macarena off the course. End cap going forward from Celestial Legend, and Tom Kitten's going to settle last of all. Griff makes the running clearly, out by a length and a half to Moravia. Cabalas a bit keen going to third, then Celestial Legend on the rails from end cap. Macarena gets back now, and Tom Kitten sees them all. 800 metres to go. Griff held together by Millam. A half length clear to Moravia. Cabalas with that cover today in third, then Celestial Legend from end cap. Macarena is in a three wide line with some cover, and Tom Kitten travelling wells last of all, about four lengths off the lead. So not a great deal of speed here. It's Griff just in front of Moravia, and then came Cabalas. Celestial Legend's eyeing off an inside run in cap a bit strung up Macarena's pulling wide and Tom Kitten is asked to go a bit flat footed there so Moravia takes the lead Griff didn't find a great deal and Cabalas strides up on the outside and Cabalas went past Moravia then came Macarena and Celestial Legend hitting the line on the fence but it's Cabalas pushed on Cabalas clear and Cabalas a great winner of the Eskimo Prince beats the Philly Macarena and then cap got up to run third in front of Moravia and Celestial Legend Tom Kitten was only warming up at the end of the 1200 metres and Griff, who led them up, has finished last. Just a reminder how good of a trainer Bjorn Baker is. Uh, decided, decided this colt by I Am Invincible was up to this grade. Kicked off at Rose Hill in a 72 grade there. and was an impressive winner. But decides, you know what, we're going to tackle uh, a group of the best three-year-old colts and fillies that are around. 
had the edge. Pile onto has been best backed and really well supported into 270. So has the hold. The punters are keen on the Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott stable getting the job done with another two-year-old. Elmore Zillow is now our second elect and has gone eight into seven dollars or more. And again, not a great deal to report in terms of inward movement toward the back end of the market. It is all set now. <laughs> Racing. Well, fully lit wasn't great out. Arts Alive jump well and fully lit now wound up getting to second. Winning proposal handy and Trunk is bursting on the scene as well. And Trunk went up to join Arts Alive for the lead and fully lit caught three wide then winning proposal. Ruta Real not too far away on the outside of Beer Baron. And they're followed then by Nymphadora going forward around the field. Otterson's back midfield towards the inside. Express yourself firing up. Zesterman with a bit of cover at the 600. On the outside of El Morzio, and a hot tin Ruth, thundering soul, rag queen, and a big gap to Bella Cardesia. Trunk turns the corner in front, Trunk at Arts Alive, followed by Fully Lit. Nymphadora the outside's had a tough run. Otterson's darting up the inside. Express yourself, Ruta Real working into the clear. Fully Lit at the 200. Fully Lit's a length clear from Nymphadora. Ruta Real into the clear. It's Fully Lit 100 out. Fully Lit a length clear from Ruta Real closing in. It's Fully Lit though, fending off all challengers, and Fully Lit wins the English. Millennium beat. Ruta Regal and Rag Queen charging home into third. Then winning proposal El Morzio, Otis and Sten. You cannot beat them. They are the kings and queens of the two year olds. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott add yet another trophy to the cabinet of this two year old crop, which is the crop of a generation. Fully lit has done a huge job from a wide barrier. Well done to Regan Bayless, a 60,000 by Hellbent. He did it at both ends, and look at the owners. A lifetime. Oh, unbelievable to see that he's been able to extricate that horse from a wide draw. It's just and uh, has run third, and winning proposal runs fourth. So uh, the numbers. I'll be looking for a Rafi, a big blowout. And forward and engaged, and he's the one that's really taken my eye. He goes on top. Snow Patrol, I'd certainly give a push for. I think the team have got. Five now is Southport Tycoon. Really interesting. So he's just a touch soft late here. Still in red figures, though, your favourite. Sweating up like he always does in a manning yard on a hot day. Ah, uh, geez, cover. Set and racing. Hey Fat Cat, Mr. De Beats, and Jumping Well, Carbonados with also Flying Trapeze. They share it early. Carbonados is going to lead the race. Then came Shiny New Deal, third the rails, and Southport Tycoon, fourth one off the fence immediately. Two and a half. Tycoon, just getting a bit closer on the outside, would be three and a half off the pace. Shiny New Deal, fourth the rails, a length and a half Snow Patrol, then Sacramental Zip Away, and two and a half to Hey Fat Cat. 750 metres to go. Carbonados as it likes. By a length and a half. Two in second place flying trapeze and then Southport Tycoon next in the field on the inside shiny new deal. The bolter from Snow Patrol who's tracking the favourite. A length and a half away. Zip away outside of Sacramental and Hey Fat Cat with a lot to do. Carbonados held together before the corner at the 400 metres from flying trapeze who's full bore. Southport Tycoon is tanking into it. Snow Patrol is running on two and back behind them Sacramental. Southport Tycoon lets rip on the outside of Carbonados but Snow Patrol's a real danger. Southport Tycoon had a race at the 150. And next, Snow Patrol, who's peppering away. Southport Tycoon and Snow Patrol, stride for stride. Snow Patrol has just beaten Southport Tycoon. Third zip away for fourth. Hey, Fat Cat or Carbonados. Next in the field then was Flying Trapeze. Towards the end, shiny new... Five riders, including Craig Williams, who've won this race on three occasions previously. And Zara now stands alone. He's a four-time winner of the Autumn Stakes. Snow Patrol joins... ...in the last 14 editions to win this race first up. And can it be a pointer, perhaps? Let's have a look at the uh, preludes now because the Colts and Goldings come up and it's all about Pedner and Paul Snowden's team. When markets first went up, it was body. Maybe a stencil of, uh, I don't know, bone. Well, as I said uh, during the runner by runner, the bodyguard really took my eye when I saw him on debut, and I haven't been disappointed by his. Here, and it's all about $2.70 here with high octane. Drawn the paint here, too. We haven't seen too many coming up on the fence, but this track is really drying out. Foxy Cleopatra making some ground. And they're racing, and high octane on the inside jumped away pretty well. Homes are caught the best out with Innovisions, and stay focused began beautifully. Three across the track. High octane.
Octane drives up on the inside to get to fourth. Then came untapped bodyguard Helberg, Pieris, and last of all, cardiologist. Inner Visions, 800 metres to go. Led the prelude, three quarters of a length, Holmes are caught. A length and a quarter, stay focused third. Then came bodyguard the outside and high octane on the fence. A length away in the field, untapped Pieris, Helberg, and last cardiologist. Coming up towards the corner, 450 out. The leader is Inner Visions, a length and a quarter to Holmes are caught. Stay focused, three deep coming on. High octane waited with, and then Pieris untapped and bodyguard gets a trail into the race and is running on behind them. Cardiologist Inner Visions at the 200 metres. Stay focused on the outside, coming hard, and bodyguard is now letting rip on the outside. Bodyguard takes stay focused. Bodyguard hands and heels at the 50, and Nick in front, and it's bodyguard. Bodyguard won it. Second stay focused. Third Holmes are caught, untapped, and high octane didn't get a lot of room in the straight. Inner Visions Pierre as cardiologist and Helberg last. Well, the poker tell was there for Mark Zara was prepared to commit and ride bodyguard. He'd been on both of them in trials in Sydney in the lead up to these preparations. Blame behind, one thing for sure. Bodyguard is a contender for the Blue Diamond in a fortnight's time. Three, four, grabbing third. Absolutely, Nigel. A bit of drama. Things take shape yesterday, Hutch. The Colts and Geldings in the Phillies, they've almost run identical time. Different mixture, though, to how it unfolded. Talk us through Bodyguard, the $1.6 million son of I'm Invincible, picked up by James Harron and his fantastic return and a lovely ride from, from Mark Zara as well and a luckless run to the favourite. But we'll take it, Matt. Obviously, he had a high price tag on him, but um, he's a very well-bred colt and he's a very good type. And I was just pleased that he came back got off the back of a break after his debut and he looked equally as good in the mounting yard. One is because they're nearly identically run and they've run very similar times. So solving the puzzle going forward won't be I was that say, easy. a dream or a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, a dream in terms of you can line them up, you know, because yeah. I think going a lot of people had the colts ahead of the fillies and I don't know if that's necessarily uh, justified either. Ultimately, we've got, you know, five horses within, running within a length. So barriers going forward, huge factors, and we, we haven't spoken about high octane yet either with any luck in running. Who knows where a high octane would finish, but uh, clearly it was, was luckless on the day. So, yeah, I'm just... Simon. So high octane drew one and it turned out to be more hindrance than help. You, you mentioned trying to quantify what the difference would have been if he had have had some clear air with Blake Sheen aboard yesterday. Uh, in retrospect, and it's fresh, but... Oh, no, you've got to put him right in the finish. Yeah, I don't think you can say he would have won. I don't know if you can say he would have definitely not won. What do you think, that's my, that's my opinion. I like... But will it change again? Uh, $9 in that futures Blue Diamond market is Bold Bastille, who comes up a short price favourite here off her Cox Plate Day win. She won by three. It looked fantastic. $1.95 out to two oh five now for your favourite. And uh, she's drawn that... The Blue Diamond Bold Bastille is a hot, hot favourite. We saw Bodyguard return from an... Yeah, she looked fantastic. She looked very similar to the way that she did when she fronted up on debut. Happy to have her on top. She's a precocious filly and she... Time as much as the next best in the market. This is a good go here for the two-year-old Phillies edition of the Blue Diamond Prelude. Bold Bastille. OK, 2.05 now. Punters are shopping and chipped in here. Kurayagi holding the $6.50. 6 as I, as I talk to you, we'll swap out another half a point. Hooray Sa Sagi once again trimmed up a little bit. Gates cleared. And they're racing. And Bold Bastille from the middle broke away the best. From on the outside to be or not to be. And also driving up on the inside is Kuriyanagi. Two lengths to Loafer on the fence from Cool Star and Dancer for Money. They were followed by Superlicious trying to get closer to the fence from Broadhurst. And then Hayasugi. And also She Hung the Moon from Ultimatum and Flattered. Well back in the field, Juviance and also Matisse. And in her eyes is last. So it's the favourite Bold Bastille just in front of to be or not to be at the 600 metres. Koryanagi next the inside. They were followed by Dancer for Money Deeper from Cool Star, who's niggled at before the corner. Lofus, Superlicious, Hayasugi, She Hung the Moon, Ultimatum, Flattered, and then Broadhurst on the inside. So it's Bold Bastille around the turn. 300 metres to go. Clicked up by Zara. A length in front of To Be or Not To Be. Back along the inside. Koryanagi is looking for the gaps. Just about got it. Bold Bastille, they've got it. Koryanagi To Be or Not To Be, and Hayasugi 
Hayasugi on the outside, Koryanagi and Hayasugi, they're going to hit it together, and it's nearly a dead heat, a photo, Hayasugi or Koryanagi, they were followed by Matisse in company with To Be or Not To Be, who just misses the drum, I fancy, Ultimatum, Bol Bastille got tired, followed by Flattered, Superlicious in her eyes, Loafer next to the back, Dancer for Money and Cool Star, it's a photo, Koryanagi and Hayasugi, and it'll be Hayasugi, number two. Number two, Hayasugi's got up to win it by a nose. It's a wart on the line in a thriller. Their heads were in unison. The fun continues for Clinton McDonald, and now the sixth filly to complete the preview prelude double, and her shot at history awaits in a fortnight's time. Only Midnight Fever. Bull. Hayasugi, $47,500 purchase out of the English-Australian weanling sale a couple of years ago. What a shrewd purchase that is. And she'll chase history in a fortnight's time. Midnight Fever in 1987 is the only filly to have won the two lead-ups and then won the big one. And again, Clinton McDonald, some time pretty much identical with what happened in the Colts and Geldings 40 minutes earlier, a slightly... I mean, literally, you know, to, down to hundredths of a second. You're talking a few hundredths here or there, but very, very similar. But she finished off Hayasugi really well. I mean, she did have that clear air, so you could argue that. She may have been, as Michael's going to suggest in a moment, on a better part of the track. And how much you quantify that is up for grabs. But what has to... You have to also cop it. thought uh, one of the eye-catching runs was uh, Matisse... Great run. Anthony yeah. and Sam Friedman's from last, uh, right down the outside, I thought, uh, as well. Cause a boost to Kurianagi's effort back along the fence for Will Clark and Nikki O'Shea. Yeah, well, I thought she was in the wrong part of the track. The winner was in the best part of the track. Uh, Hiyosugi... Penalty you pay for the inside. How much you judge that as opposed to the amount of ground that uh, the winners actually covered. The bottom line is there's not much between them. And once again, look at for the Blue Diamond in a fortnight's time with thanks to Ladbrokes. And it feels like you, you've got to pick your sporting team this time of year. Everyone's always like, oh, I barrack for the Colts and I barrack for the Phillies. Is there that sort of division this year? Because, uh, again, a fortnight out to the Blue Diamond. Let's have a look at the Rubiton now. What a horse, Harry White. Jeez, I loved him. As Fura, she flies first up. She's back. She's the horse to beat. Over 65% of turn. Most Gave us the Oakley Plate, Quinella in reverse, though. Lofty strike made it through. Probably deserves to be. I like what I saw from her in the yard. She goes on top. Look. Fura, punters, chips all in here. We're getting hot late in the day at Caulfield. Sports. <laughs> Are back and racing. Zapateo jumped away well with also hypothetical as Fura was away pretty neatly too and Indian Pacific out wider. After 150, Indian Pacific is going to sweep across the face of the field to lead hypothetical as Fura on their quarters. A length and a quarter away next in the field is Vivian on the rails and also Zapateo followed by Mornings and Glory, Queen of the Ball, Sweet Ride, Kalos, Bank, Moore, Snapped, Zathus and last of all, Barbie's Fox. Hypothetical, 550 50 metres to go, showing great burners, taking them on, almost two lengths Indian Pacific as Fura, then came Zapateo for the back as Vivian Mornington Glory, Queen of the Ball hunting the inside, then Sweet Ride Kalos snapped Bankmore, Barbies Fox and Zathus, hypothetical 250 metres to go, giving a brave exhibition, but as Fura's chasing hard, then came Vivian and Kalos down the outside, as Fura up to hypothetical, 100 to go but here's Kalos, Kalos sliding on by, storms home and it's Kalos, Kalos, one of the length. Second as Fura, third Zapateo, fourth hypothetical. Then came Mornington Glory from Indian Pacific and Bankmore and Vivian and Snap. Streelaw's on top selection at a price and he made the case pre-race that the only time we saw this son of Medaglia Doro in the spring was here in the Heath. He was an $8 chance on that occasion. It was a forgivable performance when as Fura had his number fresh. They met on similar terms today. He was twice the price, and he's been able to turn the tables thanks to an excellent steer from Blake Shin. Second at her seasonal return, the first time she gets defeated at the Caulfield 1100, they won 102.9, a quick time, not quite here. Brent has mentioned an important lead-up for horses heading towards the Oakley Plate in a fortnight. We know that is going to be the grand final for a number of these second-up hutch, as Fura perhaps being key. There's a sort of set every chance. Thought she was given a nice ride. Uh, good speed in the race with Hypothetical. Look at this last 630. 318, so they were humming like this has been a big win, but it might sort of um, stack up what Michael was saying about just finding that wider part on.
on the track off a good speed, but gee, the way Kalos has let down here, uh, it's hard to deny that it was an outstanding win and, and thoroughly deserved. 150 metres down the outside as Fuhr up to hypothetical 100 to go, but here's Kalos. Kalos sliding on by Storms home, and it's Kalos. Kalos, one of the length. Second as Fuhr, a third appetite. First and third for Godolphin and James Cummings with the mayor's app. Um, Look, I thought for a first up run for As For, given the tempo that the race was run at, she was probably entitled to be a little bit vulnerable late, and I think she'll improve out of it. Yeah, definitely. She's sold at 16 bucks with sports bet. Now, here's the feature the CF4. It's all about Mr. Brightside. Over 60% of turnover is with the champ to resume. He loves this track and trip. His figures are outstanding, and punters, your residual, I'll tell you, the favourites haven't had a good run of it today in the Cox Plate. Mr Brightside bids for his fifth Group 1, as mentioned, fifth last year. Craig Williams winning this race on a wait for age star in Hartnell back in 2018. To win the All Stakes, seven of the last 13 have come via the Australia Stakes. The race he won a couple of weeks ago, Streets of Avalon and Black Caviar were first up. Yeah, look, I've been really torn uh, in my decision uh, regarding this parade. I've gone with V8 on top, and that's based on the fact that he... ...inside the wait for age jam, on his way to a second all-star mile here. And uh, $1.75 now, so a truckload of money for Mr Brightside and Craig Williams. Interesting battle of tactics down the page here. Uh, V8 will roll forward. Pericles there, seven uh, each of two. You'll see V8 just sneak out to 7.50 as I talk to you. They'll both sit up on speed and pride to Jenny as well. Tisha will get their sets. They are ready and they're racing and Mr Brightside dwelt was the second last out. A tissue goes back to the end. V8 jumped well with pride of Jenny. Buffalo River keeps itself up there on the inside. A length of way out wide. Ayrton's pushing up. They were followed by Pericles outside of Mr Brightside. A length and a quarter. Munamek. Then Bustler a tissue last. Pride of Jenny's going to lead and eventually crosses Buffalo River with Ayrton the outside. They're a length and a half in front of V8 with a lovely trail. Then Mr Brightside who got to fifth, a length and a quarter, Pericles, Bustler, a tissue, Munamekas last, Pride of Jenny, the front runner, 800 metres to go by a length and a quarter, in second, Buffalo River, Ayrton is third, it's been a strong tempo, a length and a half to V8, six off the front, tracked by Mr Brightside, two lengths off the three-year-old, a length and a half, Pericles, and then came Bustler, Munamek, and a tissue's a long way off the leader, Pride of Jenny, 500 to go, a length, Buffalo River, two and a half, Ayrton, followed by V8, next in the field, Mr Brightside, with six lengths to pick up and back behind them Pericles Pride of Jenny joined by Buffalo River 250 metres to go it's last man standing two lengths to Ayrton V8 and Mr Brightside is coming on now Buffalo River at the 150 Pride of Jenny won't give in and now Mr Brightside is sprouting wings here he comes Mr Brightside over the top he got up he got up Mr Brightside I think Mr B's back in town beat Pride of Jenny and also Buffalo River then V8, Ayrton, Pericles, Bustler, Munamek, and a tissue was last. A great horse wins a great horse's race. The 100th edition of the CF4 Stakes. It'll send shivers down your spine. 185, the numbers across the line. And Mr Brightside is able to reel in the leaders in Pride of Jenny and Buffalo River, who also look like all stakes winners for stages for much of the Caulfield straight. But there's no denying Mr Brightside. He won the Memsey here in the spring. That after winning a PB Lawrence, his fifth group one, the second of them over the Caulfield 1400. He gives Lindsay Park their eighth win in the All Stakes, but their first for 29 years. It's hard to believe they haven't won this race since a Melbourne Cup winner in June did back in 1995. General. He's, he's still a bit cheeky, he's still full of himself because he's got improvement. And today, Hutt fell to the start in red, and we were lucky enough to be able to get from a nice barrier into a nice position. He raced well, but then, wow, you know, Jenny's such a tough horse, which we've known the last time I met her. And uh, that was a brutal run race, and uh, I'm just very lucky that even though through my urgings and keeping him balanced, that he's just got an amazing ability, but great will to win. Was there any age? If Mr Brightside runs the table of Group 1s through the prep that we expect, we know the All-Star Mile doesn't have Group 1 status, but if he was able to win a Futurity, an Australian Cup, and then potentially go to Sydney and win a Queen Elizabeth, he's an eight-time Group 1 winner. He's got five at the moment. He can jump from being great to a genuine Hall of Famer in the next couple of months. Yeah, well, those comparisons were really interesting, and I think the greatest thing Mr Brightside's got on his side is that he's a gelding, so as long as he stays sound, he can continue to race, whereas Lonro was retired uh, to... Um 
to start. But yeah, really spectacular. 100th edition of the Sea Full Stakes taken out by Mr. Brightside. Was the second last out. A tissue goes back to the end. V8 next in the field. Mr. Brightside with six lengths to pick up, and back behind them Pericles. Pride of Jenny joined by Buffalo River. 250 metres to go. It's last man standing. Two lengths to Ayrton V8, and Mr. Brightside is coming on now. Buffalo River at the 150. Pride of Jenny won't give in, and now Mr. Brightside is sprouting wings. Here he comes, Mr. Brightside over the top. He got up. He got up, Mr. Brightside. I think Mr. B. It's almost as if Mr. Brightside heard Matt Hill say across the course, PA, it's last man standing, and he just said, well, that's my gem. He put the mouth guard in and got to work in the last 300 metres. We spoke to Craig Williams post-race about the tactically being a lot harder for Brightside, but, yeah, fantastic. When in terms of prior to Jenny, she was fantastic. I think it was very efficiently rated. I mean, 99.5%, so she's nearly gone exactly the type of pace that you want to over that distance, so she was a fan. And he'll improve, and he'll improve once he gets out to a mile again as well. Pride of Jenny, I thought, was quite forward for her first up run this preparation. Um, through the spring yard, I thought they had her looking pretty spot on first up. She'll take a little bit of natural improvement out of the race. V8 had done really well in between runs. I think he's the interesting runner. Damien Lane um, was adamant post-race when speaking to Connections that if he hadn't have had to do the work to draw the field up to those two leaders, that he would have finished a length closer and he thought he may have been fighting out the finish. Um, I had a quick chat to Calvin McAvoy. I, McAvoy, I know... Um, well done to Buffalo River. Of course, he got the all-star mile Guernsey now and good on him. He's run out of his skin. I mean, maybe he's just... Uh, you know, when he's good, he is very good. Um, I've generally thought he's better with a little bit of cushion in the track, but that wasn't the case yesterday. I would have upgraded to a good three. Ayrton. 60 cents separating the top two in the market when we first went up. Now that gap has widened and the money reflects that. Switzerland is the $1.70 favourite. Now $3.20 about Shangri-La Express. So $2.40 out. Shangri-La Express driven out of the gates and is going to lead together with Enrich who moves up on the inside but Shangri-La Express has got the speed to hold it. Enrich goes to a clear second and Switzerland the favourite up to third. Then Fly Fly on the improve on the inside of Extreme Diva. Tardelli's pulling and the roughy Juvana is thrilling so they last of all. So Shangri-La Express leads and the odds on favourite Switzerland races to second three quarters away. Enrich was taken hold of and Fly Fly continues to improve now going to third. In Inside, Enriched has been forced a little bit deeper than Tardelli, Extreme Diva and Juvana's last of all. Shangri-La Express leads for home by a length and a half. On Switzerland being wound up in second, Enriched travels up well and further back to Fly Fly. Shangri-La Express under siege now from Switzerland in the middle. Enriched the outside, Extreme Diva's next inside the 200 and now Switzerland opens the shoulders, really lays it down to Shangri-La Express is fighting on doggedly, but Switzerland too strong at the end. And Switzerland, two out of two, wins the Piero Plate, beating Shangri-La Express, who really stuck to the task. Extreme Diva running well in third, followed by Fly Fly, then came Giovanna. Enrich travelled up well, but didn't find a great deal and finished towards the rear with Tardelli. So the numbers were 2, 1, 7 and 8. It was the match race we were hoping for. Switzerland got the better of Shangri-La Express, but had to work for it. So Buenos Noches was always going to be pretty popular in this one, and three times more money is going that direction. So I don't think you'll see much better than the $1.80, maybe 10 cents here or there, but $1.80 as we speak. King of Sparta's been the drifter today, $2.80 out to $3.70, so there's a big gap between them now, less than a point when we opened this morning. Now on the expressway stakes... 1,200 here at Randwick. They're set now. Racing now. Cole Crusher jumped really well. Together with Malkovich. And Malkovich giving a real wind-up. It's going to hold out Cole Crusher. Golden Mile pouncing through on the rails. King of Sparta Wells position. Then came west of Dolby, who jumped OK, but the filly drifting back now from straight Acer. And the odds-on favourite, Buenos Notches, settles last at about six off the lead, which is Malkovich. He's trucking along here at the 800 metres. Cole Crusher couldn't go that type of speed, so Malkovich led by three to Cole Crusher. Similar margin to Golden Mile third. Then came King of
Notches Sparta west of Dolby Straight Acer. What is Notches being quietly ridden last of all as Malkovich goes further in front, really seizing the opportunity. Is today the day for Malkovich? Opens up by six now on Coal Crusher. Four further back to Golden Mile. What is Notches still back last inside the 300 metres? Malkovich with a long lead from Coal Crusher falling away. King of Sparta starting to wind up, but still a little big gap off them. It's Malkovich. He's getting tired now. King of Sparta down the outside and Cole Crusher digging. Here's the King. King of Sparta over the top. King of Sparta beat Cole Crusher. Malkovich scrambled into third, I fancy, just in front of Wattis Notches, just too far back. Then straight ace, a golden mile didn't pick up. West of Dolby was last. King of Sparta gets the win in the Expressway Stakes Group 2 victory for King of Sparta of Peter and Paul Snowden and, of course, James Malkovich and King of Sparta right over the top. Pretty comfortable. Oh, we talk about confidence. I was yelling at James to get going a little bit sooner, but he knew exactly what he had underneath him. He knew exactly the pace that had affection. thought Cole Crusher ran an really credible race. He was able to hit the line nicely. We thought that Bonas Notches was going to be able to finish off strongly and I think that that was... ...their neck out on this one and they've made our favourite the lay of the day. Now, for those who've been following, the lay of the day seems to go in waves. Uh, they lost 10 straight and they won 10 straight and I reckon they've been having a pretty average run of it of late because the past three have won, I seem to think. Uh, Fangirl at $2.15, Miller tries at $6, think at over $7.50. So just in terms of money, Fangirl... It's the lineup for the Petaluma Apollo Stakes. Think it over, looking three second success in the event. The light is on. Tractable from Barrier 1. They're off and racing, and a tractable jumped OK. Certainly showing good muster on the rails. Think it over was nicely into stride, and Lindemann's quickly on the scene, going to second. Just in front of Think it over is caught a fraction deep early. Then came Arapaho and militarised between runners with Navajo peak out deep. A gap then to Buckaroo on the inside of the favourite fan girl, and the nine year old Cascadian settles down last of all. So a tractable gallops to a length and a half lead, with Think it over pretty fresh going to a clear second. Lindemann back to third. Then Navajo Peak, Arapaho the rails are half the outside to militarise. Further back to Fangirl is one off the fence on the outside of Buckaroo. Cascadian sees them all about eight off the front runner. So Bolas has a tractable free striding in the lead. Out by a length and a half to think it over. Followed by Navajo Peak. Then Lindemann in fourth position. Arapaho the rails. Now militarises starting to take closer order. Moving up with a trail and Fangirl is hooking deep with that cover as they straighten up. A tractable swings in front from think it over a half length away. Then came Navajo Peak. Fangirl is starting to rattle down the outside of the track. And in a stride, James McDonald let the mare go. And Fangirl quickly put three links on them. Think it over second. And then came Militarise. But Fangirl, what a beauty. What a return to racing. Fangirl trounces them. Militarise second. Think it over third. Good go for fourth position. Lindemann, Navajo Peak and Buckaroo. Then Attractable, Arapaho and Cascadian. Oh. Wow, that was an impressive return by Fangirl, wasn't it? Exactly what you want to see from a Group 1 winner. She just cruised up to them and cruised past. Yeah, class prevails. She was just simply too good for them today, defied the way the race was run. Look at the way that James McDonald is riding her. I almost looked back at James at the top of the straight and I said, he knows exactly what he's got underneath him. He's got a lap full of horse. That's her easiest performance. I would have to say this is the best she has returned. She's clearly in for it. Excellent preparation. You cast... It's a dominant performance in I the mean, Apollo Stakes. Chris Waller winning this for the sixth time. James McDonald for the third. You just did it under her own steam, didn't you? He, he literally <laughs> hasn't moved on her. She's, ca she's cantered past them. I mean, it, that's a frightening performance, really. Yeah, uh, rise completely. And the favourite, $4.20, we haven't seen for so long. But... There is money there. It is the best-backed runner in the race. The other one, as you can see from the fluctuations, eight fifty into six dollars, is Kamachi. Kamachi and Fasil are probably the two that map best. Learning to fly and Tis Invincible, drawn to be well back at one point in the race, and that pretty much sums it up. Learning to fly best backed in a race that punters are lacking a bit of confidence. The favourites drawn wide out. Be ready, clear. Racing now. Tis Invincible left the gates quite well. 
Uh, Fasile showing great speed towards the inside and Fasile's going to lead. Chris Dilly there with I'm a Steel. Kamachi drives into four from Autumn Ballet. They're followed by Mumbai Muse. Uh, further back to Arctic Glamour, Kind Words, Steffi Magnetica. Tez Invincible's very wide on the track and Learning to Fly's been snagged back and going down towards the inside rail. So Fasile leads here from I'm a Steel at the 750. Chris Dilly left without cover. Then Autumn Ballet on the inside of Kamachi. Mumbai Muse is three out a gap of two further back to kind words they're followed to further back by learning to fly so chad schofield's going to ride for luck up on the inside then came arctic glamour steffi magnetica tis invincible's last but has clear running getting to the outside and learning to fly is out now coming to the middle of the track facile leads the way from chris dilly kamachi coming off heels learning to fly is winding up tis invincible falling away learning to fly down the middle and kamachi through the middle learning to fly and kamachi Learning to fly the outside of Kamachi. Stride for stride. Kamachi. Kamachi does it today. Kamachi a half head on the line to learning to fly. Third, I think, Steffi Magnetica. Then came Chris Dilly from Arctic Glamour and Tis Invincible. It didn't go well for her from the wide draw. Then Facile, Autumn Ballet. Uh, kind words and stopping pretty sharply there was I'm a Steel and Mumba. Both of these fillies are going to improve considerably, in particular learning to fly, of course, who's had so long off the track. And uh, for you, Lizzie, a lovely third placing, another stakes uh, performance on the resume. Yeah, good to see Chris Dilly run so well. But Kamachi, it's, it's interesting. These horses have been facing each other time and time again. And Kamachi uh, went down to Chris Dilly in the Percy Sykes as a two-year-old and she's been hitting, you know, sort of the crossbar each and every run, but she's got that fitness on her side. She also had a little bit um, more residual fitness from her preparation over learning to fly, who I thought Chad Schofield rode her brilliantly. That gate, he had to... Able and cracking addition of light fingers on paper, and it certainly lived up to the bill. You don't get what you owed in this sport too often, but Kamachi deserved this victory after having been close on so many occasions. Basically, the Phillies version of I Am Unstoppable through our spring, including the placing in the reprogrammed 1,000 guineas and a terrific return from learning to fly, who we hadn't oh. seen since the Golden Slipper. Yeah, well, uh, Kamachi ran and everything by the Sydney to Hobart over the, you know, <laughs> over the spring, but was very gallant um, more often than not. And it was good to see her get that win. And I thought, I must admit, with 50 to go, with learning to fly there on the outside, I thought, oh, learning to fly is going to run over the top again and she's going to finish second. But she, it looked to my eye like she kicked back, so good on her. She yeah. uh, deserved that. The one re Let's rip into race six. This is a cracking race for the three-year-old fillies here. And I'll tell you something, it's an interesting market because we're $4 the field. On top for me, Look, I've always been a fan of the filly. I think she's got a bit of quality. She Quote, Molly Nickers and infatuation and then next elect. The next three have been specked out of price. Well, it smells of a bit of an upset. I mentioned that early doors and it happened. So here we go. Real dreams on her toes. Hey. Ready and racing at the 1400 metres. Material Dreams missed the start a length and a quarter, and Pink Shandon is going back towards the end. Larkasona jumped away quickly with Grinzing about infatuation, and Nez, there's a real clump of them pushing forward in the early stages of the contest. As out deeper on the course, Grinzing Bell is forcing the speed with infatuation. Larkasona a length and three quarters, and Nez peeds out of that battle from Tylus, and they were followed by Luizica. Two and a half lengths away, Donegal outside of French Endeavour a couple of lengths away, Molly Nickers. Three further back, Basilina on the inside of Pink Shandon and Material Dreams as last as the field has really strung out. 700 metres to go. It's Grinzinger Bell in front by a length infatuation. Two lengths, Inez the outside. They were followed by La Casona. Luizica getting closer. One off the fence now. Three wide, about four off, followed by Donegal French Endeavour. Next in the field is Molly Nickers, a fair way off them. Then Pink Shandon, Basilina and Material Dreams. It's Grinzinger Bell. 350 metres to go, leading two lengths. Two in second, Infatuation, followed by Inez and Tylus. Luizica, Molly Nickers down the outside with French Endeavour. Grinzing a bell, full bore at the 150. Still had a buffer, about two and a half lengths. French Endeavour and Molly Nickers. Grinzing a bell, punched out, needs the line late. Grinzing a bell, but she's done enough. Grinzing a bell, good effort from the wide draw. A bobbing goes second, French Endeavour or Molly Nickers, and then came Infatuation, Tylus. Next was Pink Shandon, Basilina, Luizica, then Material Dreams, La Casona, Inez, and Donegal was at the tail of the field. Skybird jumped out of the ground and nabber in the shadows of the post on Cox Plate Day in the Phillies' class.
from Grinzingabel. I dare say this race got a rate very well indeed. They were rolling along at a very solid tempo there, as Ed. And they've gone quicker than the previous race for the older mares. So they've gone 122.35. We're going to have a look at the, the times from the sample of the five 1,400-metre races a little bit later on in relation to Jimmy yes. Stars. Elms, talk us through the effort here of grinsing a bell to go to the front and hold them off. Well, Damien Lane summed it up best post-race with his uh, summary. Like, he did a lot of early work. He worked with it. She wanted to run, similar to a jump out, where she went fantastically well in, a, in leading into this event. I think she's just clearly come back better. He got there. Um, he dropped anchor a touch, but she ran along at a really good speed. Fantastic performance. You know the beauty of this meeting? We had five races over 1,400 metres, and we'll be able to touch on that later. This was a good overall time. She was very brave. Good return for Molly Nickers, but all honours with the winner. Uh, bypassing the guineas, um, but to, to work from the outside gate, which she, which she did, um, and find the lead and then be able to maybe have a couple of cheaper sectionals, but to finish the way she did, that was outstanding. And a $32,000 Caraca, <laughs> book two... Purchased by John Wheeler and Danny O'Brien, it just goes to show. Um, amazing. So, uh, 10th stakes winner for sure. The run ended with about 100 to go, I think. Molly Nick is, uh, is quite an impressive filly. I like her. She's a filly that you'd want to be following through the season. When she first came into the yard, you said. Well, Colts and Geldings, and the King is back. King Colorado. His sectional times were slashing last start. He flew home. He gets to the big uh, 1400 spacious track at Flemington. And you know what? He was 3.20 out to 360 on race day, back into $3.30. He's got good... Eight years to win the CSA's fresh. He defeated Holy Man's Maximilius, Elkington Road. Attrition was fifth, of course. We saw him return here and run a cracking second behind the New Zealand filly Legato in the Australian Guineas. Jane, your pick of the yard for the CSAs. Look, I think this is an outstanding uh, lot of colts and geldings, and I think this will be a really good form race. I've gone with King Colorado. I like the improvement he's made. Drifting favourite King Colorado. He's out the door late. Otago, they're coming for here from the Price Kent Junior team. I know. Ben Mallam in the saddle. He's drawn beautifully to get the right run. They're sticking close. Ready to go, and they're racing. Tannhauser away only fairly. And Etu Brute, one of the last to leave with Run Harry Run, emerge. Jump quickly with Ambassadorial, who's firing across from that outside alley. And Hey Fat Cat's used up early too. Flying Valley got to fourth, two links Amigo. Then came next in the field, Otago outside of next in the race along the inside for Dad. And also out deeper on the track, Run Harry Run's improving. Then Riff Rocket King Colorado, Etu Brute towards the back as Townhauser and also. Also, Cap Farrar, Hey Fat Cat, as they reach the 800 metres, eventually work to the front from Ambassadorial, and they match strides, and they need to come up for air. A length and a quarter, a mur on the outside of Flying Valley, then run Harry, run Amigo as they approach the 600 metres. Otago in a lovely position, one off the fence, about seven off the lead from Fadad, Riff Rocket, Tannhauser, King Colorado well back with Etu Brute and Cap Farrar. Hey Fat Cat at the 450 with Ambassadorial, a mur on the outside, Flying Valley stoked up behind them and then came Run Harry Run down the centre of the track from Amigo. Where are the swoopers? For Dad's trying to get into the clear. Riff Rockets very wide. Hey Fat Cat still had a bit to offer. 200 metres to go. Two lengths. Here's Riff Rocket and King Colorado now over the top. Riff Rocket took the front of the 100 from King Colorado. Terrific return. Riff Rocket spotted by a leap. Second King Colorado, a photo for third between Otago and Vedad. They were followed by Hey Fat Cat, who's run a bold race, Cap Ferrar, Amigo and Tannhauser. They were followed by Run Harry, Run Etta, Brute, Amur, Flying Valley and Ambassadorial. Hugs for Deb Capetis and co. If ever you had to take the market and yard intel and trust it, that's the example, because Riff Rocket was a good push on both fronts. And as mentioned, we'd only seen Extra Brute and Elstrom come off winning a Victoria Derby and make their seasonal return in a CS Hayes in the last 20 years. Though both horses of quality indeed. Riff Rocket, he might be in for some sort of three-year-old camp. Expect a little bit of improvement to come. He's a serious horse. It was Love the pace. Riff Rocket on his seasonal return. So we'd only had Extra Brute and Elstrom running this race fresh as Derby winners in the past 20 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got to go back to 1994 and Mahogany winning this race. The difference being, though, he'd had a run at Sandown in January. This race was a couple of weeks early and the Guineas was actually run on this meeting at this time of year. So 
not exact comparisons. The comparison is Riff Rocket. He might have got the Derby mahogany style, perhaps just on sheer class. And we're going to see the best of him now at trips 14 and above. Yeah, I, look, I said pre-race. I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe he won the, the Derby on class. Maybe he's, I don't know what his best trip is. But I'll say this, this was one of the wins of the day on a sectional basis. Sat back, rounded him up. There's only going to be improvement to come. Hey, fat cat at Lang Valley stoked up behind them. And then came Run Harry Run down the centre of the track from Amigo. Where are the swoopers? for Dad's trying to get into the clear. Riff Rockets very wide. Hey, Fat Cat still had a bit to offer. 200 metres to go, two lengths. Here's Riff Rocket and King Colorado now over the top. Riff Rocket took the front of the 100 from King Colorado. Terrific return. Riff Rocket spun it by a leak. Second King Colorado. So the three-year-olds who brought Group 1 CVs to the race, the Derby winner and the JJ Atkins winner running the Quinella. Is there anything else in behind that can make an impression in the Guineas? Well, King Colorado, Chris, had the benefit of a run yesterday and Riff Rocket had a similar run in transit, sort of gave it a nudge out the way and went straight past it. So yeah, it sprinted him, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to see him turning the tables. I mean, and a lot can happen in racing, but um, Riff Rocket is now, you know, clearly the horse to beat. Can't, I don't think... I just can't see anything beating him in the guineas. Oh. It, that was just super impressive, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, from him and no real surprise to see Riff. I mean, I think there should be more of a gap between Riff Rocket and King Colorado personally, but I suppose we haven't mentioned V8, of course. Who was I think it's so probably brave. unlikely that V8 will line up in an Australian. Now, all right, there, the three-year-olds. Now we get to the wait for age. Let's go, uh, Imperatriz. She's back at Flemington. She's a four-time winner here in Australia and four-time in New Zealand. She won the Vic Stakes, her last gallop down the straight, and she loves a 1,000 metres. $1.80, $1.75, two and a half times as much as Private Eye were holding. Private Eye's rock solid on race day at $4.50 to upset Imperatriz. I'm unstoppable record is something to behold 17 from 23 uh, to mention some more stats but you know that last preparation um, she showed that she's the real deal and she's clearly the horse to beat here today she handles it straight it's a who's who of class and speed jane ival would have been a feast for their eyes <laughs> looking at the Black Caviar Lightning Field. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, I'm with the Imperatriz. I know she's short in the market, but um, she paraded the way I hoped she would. And I know... Our food first cross into a $1.60. It's an old-fashioned crack, this, on a, on a Saturday, folks. Into a $1.60 as I talk to you, Imperatriz. The money says that she can win. All right, Private Eye with that. He sold it around the 480 with the weight of money for the favourite. He's out to 4 yeah. Set to go, and they're racing. Imperatriz from barrier number two broke away pretty well. So too Cylinder, Bella Nipotina. I am unstoppable, not too far away either. Private Eye from the deep is also sweeping across to sit outside the mare. Imperatriz led Private Eye. They were followed by Bella Nipotina, I am unstoppable, and Cylinder. It's not that hard early. Then came the astrologist, Espiona, and Rich Fortune in a huddle. They're off the rails at the 600 metres. It's Imperatriz and Private I. Then came I Am Unstoppable, a length off those from Bella Nipotina, the astrologist, deeper. Cylinders all coiled up, and they were followed by Espiona and Rich Fortune. It's going to be a blast home at the 350. It's Imperatriz and Private Eye together. Then I Am Unstoppable, cylinder behind them from Bella Nipotina, Private Eye, Imperatriz, toe-to-toe -to -toe at the 150, but Imperatriz knuckles down, gets a neck in front of Private Eye, coming again, Imperatriz, the star wins! Imperatriz has won it. From Private Eye, Espiona, what a run. And then Bella Nipotina, followed by Rich Fortune, Cylinder, I Am Unstoppable, and The Astrologist. Another magnificent edition of the Black Caviar Lightning Stakes. And it's champions only. And I think we can start badging her in that category if there were still any doubts. Nine from ten since New Year's Day last year now for Imperatriz and her Victorian Odyssey for Mark Walker, Opie Bosson and Tiarkow continues. She ran the table through the McEwen, the Moya, the Manicato and the champion sprint in the spring. And the lingering question marks on that journey. It uh, looked pretty easy to my eye. Yeah, she's always travelling beautifully and just, just keep creeping up, creeping up. And I knew uh, once I went for her late, she, she just found that kick that she always has. All that fuss about that uh, lacklustre. And... Uh... It was a lacklustre trial, it really was, but when we galloped her on Monday, we were really happy with her, and uh, just a gun ride by Opie today, like, it was a really tactical affair, and 
uh, use the initiative, but it, it is a relief. Apart from what took... Yeah, so, uh, well, she's just a gem, really, to to do it in the spring and come back and win like that, and full credit to the second horse. He, he's a really good horse, so and he stuck it to her today, so I think you saw two really good horses fight out an exciting finish. What do you have in mind for her from here for the campaign ahead? Oh, we'll just just get her through today and see how she is at the end of next week. And was and um, they went slow early. In fact, I, I think it was the slowest lightning in 30 years. 25 years, yeah. 25 years, OK. So, and that speed, I mean, Private Eye and Imperatrice uh, tactically um, ridden brilliantly and Imperatrice was just too good. So, again... It's not that hard early. Then came the astrologist Espiona and Rich Fortune in a huddle. They're off the rails at the 600 metres. It's Imperatrice and Private Eye. Then Fortune, it's going to be a blast home at the 350. It's Imperatrice and Private Eye together. Then I Am Unstoppable, cylinder behind them from Balanipatina. Private Eye, Imperatrice, to to toe at the 150, but Imperatrice knuckles down, gets a neck in front of Private Eye coming again. Imperatrice, the star wins. Imperatrice has won it from Private Eye. SBA a ninth to group one for the Tangerine the Dream, the seventh under the care of Mark Walker, Ben Gleeson, as we know, has quickly become a very important P10 since winning the railway on New Year's Day last year, Jane. And if it wasn't for your mate Artorias coming out of the shadows to win a Canterbury <laughs> Stakes. We'd be looking at a picket fence of 10 wins against the best sprinters yeah. on our shores. She's certainly been sensational since she got to Australia. She's a mare that I think is really interesting listening to the stable. She's obviously very quiet at home, got a very kind nature, very easy to deal with, a very easy horse to... Smiles uh, from Obi, we can see in the background. I... I was really impressed with his effort and hers as well. But, you know, the margins, in terms of the races run, you know, we, we, they didn't go that quick the first two or 300. When you give those quality horses, and nobody would have expected Private Eye to be leading. I mean, he jumped well. I thought it was a, a brave ride, a great ride from, from, uh, from Blake Shin, to be perfectly honest. I mean, he said, I'm here. And, um, you know, they got that easy sort of first three or 400. They're too good to reel in. So there wasn't a mark, there couldn't be margins over them but I mean 32 and a half seconds have run home their last 600 and they were flying late but it did suit those at the head of the market for sure so he's got another great campaign ahead yeah, of him all, all credit to Joe Pride with how he's prepared private eye to be ready Espiona running on into third Michael D who's done again having her f first start south of 1200 meters the next time she gets to the 12 is likely going to be in a new market down in the weights and she looks very suited to the race based on some of the sectionals she was reeling off late. Oh, she was strong late. Um, you know, you could argue she was stronger than anything. And, the, you know, I think she was about half a length quicker than Imperatrice late. But, yeah, she, look, she found the line brilliantly. Michael D said post-race that, you know, he thought that she had a good run. And now I'll just say this, though, that that race shape where there's not much first to last, she's close enough and she's always got a great finish on her. It wasn't a surprise to see her sort of close off in that manner with that momentum built up. Bigger field, different sort of setup. While she's going to be a great chance for all the points that you mentioned, Nigel, her proximity, and that wouldn't have been expected. Jane, your assessment of the three year olds on their return yesterday Cylinder fifth beaten a shade over two lengths, and then I am unstoppable beaten four. There was looked to be some sort of issue leaving the gates, and then slow recovery came up in the stewards' report. Yeah, look, Cylinder, I thought uh, paraded really well. He probably had a little bit of improvement to come off the back of a race like this. So I'm unstoppable. Look, there was a, a look at the next best backed runner on the card. He's into a dollar twenty-four. Jimmy's off the map. Jimmy Star Craig Williams shooting for three in a row. Woohoo! The 1400 metres at listed level on the minimum. Jimmy, uh, who's five from six, he's undefeated on Australian soil. He made a fantastic return at Caulfield a fortnight ago when he got within 0.3 of a second of exceeding Excel's 20-year-old track record. Yeah. On Jimmy Starr with the All-Star Mile wild card under his belt. Jane goes in search of his first black-type victory on Australian soil. How did he parade? It looked a favourite paraded really well. Um, thing. So, uh, look, I wouldn't knock him at all in the way that he's fronted up in the mounting out. I haven't got him on top. I've gone with Carbling. I thought he paraded perfect. Out at $1.22, now $1.24. As I talk to you, it's one way traffic, a lot of pressure on Craig Williams to uh, pilot him out of trouble and give him clean air at the top. Ready over there. Oh, and clear racing. 
Bashiro took a backward step and no speed wins Storm. Crosshaven jumped away well. Oh, there's a real cluster going forward here. Kabling not an option. Savannah Cloud riddle me that all there. Barkley Square just behind those horses as uh, where's Jimmy Starr in the early stages the, of the race? It's also pushing forward and it's going to lead the race. So with about a thousand metres to go, Jimmy Starr led Savannah Cloud and then not an option. Kabling riddle me that a length and a go and it's the long odds on favourite Jimmy Starr by a half Safana Cloud, a length and three quarters Kabling pulling from not an option then came Riddle Me That, a length and a quarter away, Barkley Square in the middle of the pack from Crosshaven, Carini's got a ride home, Windstorm on its back and then came Macram and Pashiro as they run the corner, 500 metres to run, it's Jimmy Starr from Savannah Cloud not an option, stoked up, Kabling behind them on the rails, then Riddle Me That Carini followed by Crosshaven who sticks to the inside from Macram Windstorm, Jimmy Starr at the 300 metres, shook up here, Savannah Cloud's close on the outside and just about eyeballs it. Jimmy Starr still has a bit to do. Savannah Cloud's getting closer. Jimmy Starr just from Savannah Cloud. Here's Macram on the outside. Jimmy Starr fighting, but Macram the falter. Macram's got up to win from Jimmy Starr. Savannah Cloud in a photo for third with Carini. Then Barkley Square, Kabling. It's Australian racing and Flemington put into a bracket and a five-second sample as quaddy tickets are shredded right around this wide brown land. Macram makes his return, $151 on the VOP. That after touching 81 in betting, he's $100 plus across the totes. And he's, but that just set up one to dive bomb and that horse was Macram. And you could drop a pin at Flemington right now. There's silence, there's perplexed looks. At $151 SP, 300s available apparently on the exchanges. Nick Egan, uh, racing stats guru, texts me that the Hayes has had a 100 to 1 shot win in Burley Oz about sort of 13 or 14 years ago. Macram's uh, been able to topple that with this performance, and you think there's you think there's extra merit to the victory given there's a few traffic issues here. Well, have for a look the at it. He's got held up for more than half the straight. It was an enormous performance. Um, yeah, we're going to dissect a bit through this race. I think there's been some unfair criticism levelled on Craig, but, uh, and I thought it was all on as the winner. Only got out very late, dashed brilliantly, and that was a, a super win. Macram on the outside, Jimmy Starr fighting, but Macram the bolter! Macram's got up to win from... So we've now seen the replays of the five 1,400 metre contests, or four of the five across the course of the afternoon. We haven't seen the 10th and Jenny Lala's winners yet, Hutch, but break down this data, Carl Diorio all over it via his ex account, but... The yeah, thanks to Carl. This is standout factor here being well. The first 800 in that race in the Elms, which of course Jimmy Starr went forward in, was the slowest first 800 of any of the five 1400 meter races, and they came home quicker the last 600, as you can uh, um, see there, the 34-28 than any of the other races. So the race shape suited those on speed. Um, I think that you know Craig, where he drew, gave a little niggle, but he worked across. Um, ultimately, he had. Third place, Savannah Cloud, who was first up, sit outside him and and finish half a length off him in the end. Well, that, that decision that Craig made in the first 400 metres, the first two furlongs, um, clearly shows on, on the graph there that that was the slowest. Yeah, and look, they've all been run. Of, of, yeah, all, four, exactly. of all the 1,400. So what so if it, when, when that decision had to be made about what where is the speed right now, yeah. He made that decision made, that I'll, I'll, I'll roll, roll forward. forward. I'll all be posted wide. And, and, you know, you can... You know, it's everyone up... Everyone's... Macram was held up for half the straight and I thought was fantastic. But that race shape... I mean, those sections will tell you that he hasn't done the wrong thing. Um, I wouldn't have thought. Might be a better chase. That's not to say that Jimmy Starr can't bounce back and go on and win good races and, and may well do so. But I don't think different tactics would have brought about a different result yesterday. Covering ground off a slower speed and giving the third place getter an uncontested lead or an easier time on, on the front end wasn't going to... You weren't going to beat Savannah Cloud, never mind the winner who was desperately unlucky. I mean, have a look at this. They're already about... Waiting for punters to decide which way they were going between these top two in the market. But at this stage, it appears pretty much 50-50. Both of them occupy 30% of the hold and it's relatively evenly spread price proportionate across the remaining runners from there. So there's not a stack... His favourite here in the silver slipper, sponsored by Tab, there's the light. And they're racing. Embassy missed the starter length. 
and Celerity wasn't flash at either in straight charge and Espionage have won the start. Good battle early, Espionage just has it from straight charge and Clark staying pretty wide out early. Yoshinobu lands in third, followed by Gay's Artist, then Camerno's Cube Embassy and Celerity's firing up at the rear of the field. Getting to the front now, straight charge, race is two lengths clear. Espionage was happy to hand up and sit in second. Travelling a bit keen, Espionage at this point. Two lengths away then to Yoshinobu on the outside of Erno's Cube, then Gay's Artist Embassy and Celerity sees them all. Straight charge, 4.25 to run, coming well away from the fence led by two, in second position Espionage, and then came Yoshinobu, back on the inside Erno's Cube, and then came Embassy at the 2.50, and Clark goes for home on straight charge, a length and a half clear from Espionage, who's sticking to the task, but not making any ground, straight charge is charging to the wire, and off to the Golden Slipper, straight charge, led all the way from the stable mate Espionage, who was really chipping in late, pulled the margin back to a length, Erno's Cube are clear, Third, then Embassy, Celerity, Gaze Artist, and Yoshinobu. So he continues to excel this horse. Tim Clark was going to ride him in the Magic Million, so he stuck today with him. Not sure if he had the choice or not. We talked about that. He was pretty dominant over Espionage and Erno's Cube again. So, Lizzie, anything behind the first three we can forget about from a Golden Slipper point of view? And Straight Charge shortens up today. He won't be favourite. But the Gay and Adrian continue their remarkable run. Yeah, two very good runs. Two very good runs. Straight Charge had to win today to get into the Golden Slipper. Espionage has got that Breeders' Plate win to his name, so he's secure now running second in this $300,000 race. But I think that there's a lot to offer from the second horse. We have to focus on... Turns out the lay of the day as well. It was a huge conflict between the punters and the bookmakers. As it turns out, the punters got it absolutely spot on. The bookmakers didn't. Well, that's happening again. It's the lay of the day and it's also the best backed runner. So good luck to your punters. I hope you can get another one up on the tab again. The reason for it, for those wondering, this is up in great. In the Millie Fox Stakes. Cast out the back and they're off there in the Billy Fox and the favourite Lady Laguna jump brilliantly in. So did Madame Pomery in second spot with Zoo Gotcha quickly improving. How Good Are You is building up the res wide out going forward. Then came Renaissance Woman Diamond Dealer. And Vienna Princess has been very well back. He's cast pretty wide going to the first turn. Argenti is off the track as well from start. Todd's Lekvar went down to the rails last of all. It's Lady Laguna shooting for four in a row today and she gallops to the front. How Good Are You got to second and Zoo got you in a stalking roll third. Two lengths away to Madame Pomry. Then came Diamond Dealer. A gap in the field then to Renaissance Woman on the inside of Vienna Princess is one off the fence now. And the last uh, runners there are Lekvart together with Star Tontes. And Argentia is the widest runner. 500 metres to go. Lady Laguna shows the way. Zoo gotcha travelling really well behind. And immediately she comes off heels as How Good Are You surrendered. And uh, further back to Madame Pomry. 350 to go. Zoo gotcha moved up on the outside of Lady Laguna. And the pair really turn it on now. It's Zoo gotcha on the outside of Lady Laguna. Zoo gotcha ahead in front to Lady Laguna. Clear from Madame Pomry. It's Zoo gotcha looking down the lady. Yep, got her all right. Zoo gotcha. Ran down the favourite Lady Laguna. Madame Pomry a clear third. Vienna Princess next, followed by Diamond Dealer, Lechvard, Argenia, Star Tonnes, Renaissance Woman. How good are you? She's a beauty, isn't she? So, Lizzie, great to have her back. Chris Waller wins three consecutive races. J-Mac pulls the right rein. And a Group 1 winner returns to top form. It's something so special. Tom has been hammered five times more than the next best-backed runner in the race and in excess of 50% of the hold on a horse that was $3.60 when we opened and now around the $3 mark. Don't be surprised if that continues to trim in. If across the board, elsewhere apart from Tab, we see the same weight of money, Tom will be coming in even shorter than that $3 mark. In now for the Hobartville Stakes at Group 2 level. Racing now. Cafe Millennium missed the kick by a length or so, and Le Vampire jumps sharply off the inside. Has the lead on his own at the moment. Fukabana strides to second. And now Gambare being revved up is starting to muster wide out. Ducasse is pretty handy on the rails, and the inside of Flying Trapeze. Celestial Legend caught deep. End cap in the three white line as well. Back in the field is Tom Kitten from Chaya Wolf. Raff attack beaten for speed. He Man goes up the fence, and Cafe Millennium settles last. Le Vampire holds the front from the state. 
though, by Mike Gambare. They're followed by Fukabana at end cap on the improved the outside. Just behind them, Celestial Legend tracks up into fifth. Further out, Chaya Wolf is off the track. Rafa Tack making a mid-race move. Ducas has got shuffled back from the good spot. We're flying trapeze. There's a bit happening here. Tom Kitten getting shuffled back as Cafe Millennium starts a run. He-Man is now last of all. Le'Von Pierre from Gambare coming around the turn. End cap in striking distance. Then came Rafa Tack deeper out. Fukabana back on the rails from Celestial Legend. Wide out Cafe Millennium. Tom Kitten, the favourite, has got it all to do. At the 250, Le'Von Pierre in front from end cap is chipping away the outside. Celestial Legend's out now. And here he comes. Celestial Legend moved up, took the lead in the Hobart Phil Stakes, and he's starting to draw away. It's been a long time between drinks for Les Bridge, but that's his second Hobart Phil beating end cap. And Le'Von Pierre third, followed by Fukabana. Then came Chaya Wolf. Tom Kedden was next. He needs further. Further back to Gambare from He-Man, Flying Trapeze, Raff Attack, and Cafe Millennium. Him, and that was Shades of Classic Legend there. Celestial Legend winning the Group 2. Good call, Darren. Yes, and uh, Lizzie alluding to the fact that Lesbridge won this race 40 years ago with Sir Dapper. 40 years ago between wins in the Hobartville. On cap good, Tom Kitten, well, he'll like it longer. But Lizzie, we've been waiting for this with Celeste Legend, haven't we, Celestial Legend? We know that he's got this, and today he delivers for KMAC. Oh, and that combination, K-Mac and Lesbridge, we've seen it before with a grey, a dominant performance from both jockey and horse. And not only that, we were watching up on speed. It was a very messy race. You're going to have to watch it a few times over. NCAP just ran his usual honest contest. It looked like Tom Kitten just got so far out of his ground. He just was wide. He never had any great deal of luck. And then in the concluding stages, he made a bit of ground. But it, the focus is on this. More than one there. He's knocked down two of them. Great job. The tags are there. But it's time for race three now. And Autumn Angel is your favourite, albeit Drifter. $3.10 out to $3.70. Holding the most money with a super sports bet. But we're starting to see a trickle in for others. Five fifty. dollars Saren... I'm with So Glamorous. Uh, it's Graham Begg I'm with in this race. I just thought the filly's done really well in between runs. She's come on. Uh, she's a really good-looking filly. Easy to like her. Just holding on to favouritism. Sarasana was equal just about 10 seconds ago, but it just has ticked out. Back out to $4.40, but certainly hard to split the top two at the market at the moment for the sports bet punters. Autumn Angel sitting at $4.20 right now. Your favourite. They're set for the Angus Armanasco. That's been cleared. Stand pretty well. Ready, and away they go. Rocking the boat midfield away. Don't doubt Layla jump well with Sarasana. Sassy boom. Not too far away. Harlow missed. And driving up on the inside, Sparkling to hold those fillies out. So after 200, Sparkling led Sassy Boom, Sarasana on a limb at the moment. Don't doubt Layla between horses, followed by Rocking the Boat, Harlow missed a length and a quarter, Pure Paradise, Star Lacquer, two and a half, so glamorous, and Autumn Angel is last on the fence. Sparkling the front runner to the railway side, 850 metres to go from Sassy Boom, and Sarasana has to take her medicine three wide. A length and a quarter, don't doubt Layla, Rocking the boat and they were followed by Harlow Mist as they continue their journey to the 600 metres. A length pure paradise followed by Star Lacquer. Autumn Angel so glamorous is last. 600 a run. Sparkling a neck sassy boom. Sarah Sana a length away third. Don't doubt Layla the outside of rocking the boat. Then came Harlow Mist from Star Lacquer. Pure paradise held up. Autumn Angel's in a bad spot at the moment. So glamorous last around the turn. Sparkling joined by sassy boom at the point of the corner and took over. They were followed by Sarah Sana, Pure Paradise and So Glamorous out wide. Sassy Boom went for home. 150 to go. Over two lengths. Sarah Sana, So Glamorous. Sassy Boom going strongly from So Glamorous and Sassy Boom. Sassy Boom won at three quarters. So Glamorous. Sarah Sana, followed by Harlow. Miss Pure Paradise and Autumn Angel got out late but it was all too late. Then Don't Doubt Layla. Next Star Lacquer sparkling and last rocking the boats. A third, Armanasco for Danny O'Brien. They've come at six-year intervals. Shopaholic in 2012, Summer Sham in 2018. And here at Sassy Boom, the benefit of race fitness, which has been more of the trend over the classy returning fillies.
Angus Armanasco stakes with Sassy Boom Hutch on a very quick backup. Six days from a, uh, a win that broke a little bit of a drought at Sale. Uh, I covered the meeting on uh, on Sunday. So straight from country grade 64, I think it was, to a, a Group 2 win. Yeah, another one now prominent in the run outside leader. Good performance. A uh, couple of brilliant runs in defeat. Keep an eye on Autumn Angel back to the inside from last. And Amy, I know you like the run of So Glamorous and the red colours just swinging widest of all now. Yeah, I thought... Um, Sassy Boom was rated beautifully, had all the favours. You couldn't have scripted a nicer run in transit for that horse and she did a great job. But for me, one that I'd be watching going forward is so glamorous. Getting Coming from the back there, I think, um, you know, seeing her over a mile or something like that next start, I think that she'd be pretty hard to beat. But that's taking nothing away from, uh, from the winner. But she had all the favours, didn't she? It was a beautiful run in transit. Yeah, definitely. I'd be sticking with so glamorous and Autumn Angel. I think just uh, the, the, what the ultimate target would be... Oh, I guess there's a few. Some some may choose to, to back up very quickly in an Australian energy, all the things you want to see from a staying horse stepping up and trip. He goes on top outside of that United by a decent little push there. Weight of money, though, between the top two. Not a huge amount of difference at all. Immediacy only holding about 4 to 5% less there, if my maths works out correct, at $4.60. So a bit of a better price there. United Kingdom, $6 into 5 there. But the biggest... Jets, and away they go. Dunbelieven, who was moving in the barrier stalls, was midfield away. Our Cooper jumped well, with also Sox Nation just a boom and time to chat, followed by Dunbelieven. Next in the field, one off the fence, Immediacy, United Kingdom. Sox Nation, the front runner, 1,100 metres to go and beyond by a length. Two in second time to chat. A length and three quarters, our Kuva third, and then came just a boom, and three wide on the course is Wilmot doing it the hard way. A length away, immediacy and Dunbelieven, followed by Jen Richiro, who attaches itself to the back of Wilmot. Well back, United Kingdom outside of Caracas as they reach the 800. They slow it down, Sox Nation in front. Three quarters of a length in front of time to chat. They were followed by our Kuva, Further back, fourth one off the fence, just a boom from Wilmot, and then came immediacy, Dunbelieven. Well back, Jen Richiro, Caracas, and United Kingdom. So it's Sox Nation, cluttered them up, comes up towards the corner at the 450 from time to Chattu's full bore. Our Coover needs a run behind them. Immediacy got out, then came just a boom, and to the outside, United Kingdom with a lot to do. Sox Nation called upon from our Coover. Here's immediacy at the 200 metres, made a line of three, and and went to the front, immediacy, put up a length, a length and a half, Caracas out late, but it's all immediacy, immediacy, punched out by Curry, but at two and a half to three, Caracas second out, Cooper Sox Nation, a long gap, just a boom, in company with time to chat, Jen Richiro, United Kingdom not warm today, done believing, and one of the last to complete the course was Wilmot. Smiles are plenty amongst the Busset and Young camp, and... A bit of a tonic for Aussie kid John O'Neill and their group of owners who've had a real run of success in these distinctive colours, but of late things haven't been going their way. As we know, a lot of them were part of the very elegant story. They've also been with Solcom, who we know has now got an injury. A crack at an Australian Cup. I think some of these are headed towards a derby, including our winner immediacy. Yeah, three from three. Blink is on. So, you know, the, the Busted and Young team, uh, they had a game plan. Amy, there's a couple of nice horses here. These are two really nice stays. Immediacy and Caracas, who just looks very, very new and like he's get, still learning what it's all about. But I'm convinced that the format of this race will work out well down the track. Yeah, I think that uh, Trent and Nat would have been slightly nervous uh, middle stages of the race is when you put the blinkers on. He was up and about a touch, just on the bridle. Um, you'd be crossing your fingers and toes, thinking, please just take a breath and settle so that you're going to run out a nice trip. But he was really dominant, I thought. Um, Car Caracas was excellent, has no idea what it's doing yet. Um, came off the bridle round the turn, still wayward in the straight there, closed off well. And I thought Jerome Hunter's horse, our Coover, ran a really Good. admirable race yeah. too. Those, they're going to line up again, I think. I don't know whether it'll be ATC Derby yeah. or South Australian Derby, but I can see those two. And I know Immediacy had the measure yesterday. But Caracas has got a little bit of improvement and up in trip, who knows. But I think, Maddie, we could see some real... Vanessa is your favourite here in the sixth event here at Sportsbet Caulfield, the aptly named Sportsbet Caulfield. It was Gold Troop when we opened the favourite here at Sportsbet, but no longer. Campion is the one they've come for, although only holding about 2% more cash. So it is very, very even at the top of the market. But you see that move there, $3. The Group 1 Australian Cup. Jane, who did you like out of our Wait for Age gallopers in the Peter Young?
Foxy Cleopatra for me. She's come on really nicely with her first up run. She was a lot more professional in the yard. Uh, did have a couple of handles on her, but she was very set. Linked up, great minds for a winner in the last race. Hopefully continuing in the same trend here with Foxy Cleopatra, who is well supported, but it's Campionessa who looks to run this one a favourite after opening second elect in the market. Gold Trip just still sitting around $2.90, well supported into $2.80 now. So still continue. Ready, signal, racing. Campionessa from barrier number one broke away fast and Vow and Declare jumped with zest with El Soliado and Unusual Culture making a line of four in the first 150. Foxy Cleopatra behind them from loft two for the back Salino and dropping out from that wide alley gold trip is last of all just niggled at to stay in touch and get the back of that second last horse as left and then a gap Salino and gold trip last on top of the hill. 1100 metres to run it's El Soliado leading out from Unusual Culture still three quarters of a length off the leader. A length and a half away third is Vow and Declare from Campionessa. Two for the back is Loft who covers up Foxy Cleopatra. Second last is Gold Trip. Salino last as they reach the 950. So El Soliado slowed it up from unusual culture. Vow and Declare third outside of Campionessa who's just going to need a little bit of luck the mare at the 750. A length and a quarter Loft Foxy Cleopatra. Second last Gold Trip spots the speed eight and last Salino. El Soliado a Approaches the 600 metres. Starts to saw it up from unusual culture. Vow and Declare stoked up a length and a quarter away third. Can it stick? Campionessa needs to edge off the fence at some point. They were followed by Foxy Cleopatra. Gold trip still second last. El Soliado under the whip joined and headed by unusual culture at the 300. Campionessa's getting through. Then Vow and Declare, Foxy Cleopatra and Gold trip starting to launch. Unusual culture at the 200. Campionessa trying to pick it up from Vow and Declare and Gold Trip late. Campionessa, 100 to go. Vow and Declare sticky with her. Vow and Declare and Campionessa. It's a head bobber. Campionessa, Vow and Declare photo. Gold Trip, unusual culture behind them from El Soliado. Then Foxy Cleopatra, Loft and Salino. It's on the bob here. It's on the bob. And I reckon Campionessa will get her head down and win. She will. Campionessa has scraped in. What the mares have dominated the Peter Young this decade so far. That makes it four from five. And Campionessa returns to our shores. And the Tiakau juggernaut continues to roll. But only just what an effort from the old boy Vow and Declare first up to start another racing preparation. He's got some fun times ahead. Gold trip. He was coming. The crowd was lifting him, it seemed, with every stride as he loomed for a return victory but he may have just peaked on his run late and unusual culture was given every possible chance to peter young stakes hutch this was a, an enthralling battle between two very good horses two group one winners coming to the fore she had race fitness on her side campionessa great run in the herbie dyke behind uh, legato and it was, she was really well placed in this race, I felt, because tackling some resuming stayers, the others that were sort of, um, you know. Gold trip late, Campionessa, 100 to go, Vow and Declare sticky with her, Vow and Declare and Campionessa, it's a head bobber. Campionessa, Vow and The three group one winners, two the four there, ultimately Campionessa getting the cash. Matty, was there a, a moment up the straight where you thought the old boy, the Melbourne Cup Absolutely. winner, Vow and Declare, was going to bob? What a performance uh, by Vow and Declare. He did stick uh, in the end. They were like two prize fighters, weren't yeah. they? Just punch after punch. And it just shows you uh, what a what a head bobbing go it was because yeah. it was quite a decisive margin on the line. It was, but you know when you watch it again, you can't tell. I don't think uh, he's won there. And it was a it was a great finish. Even like fleetingly, Amy. At the yeah, look, he's just got his head in front there. And then he's in front again. <laughs> so it was one stride before and one stride after he, he won the race, Vow and Declare. Uh, Gold Trip was terrific. Yep. Probably pattern of the day beat him um, and is heading towards an Australian Cup, which is starting to build up as a great race with, of course, Riff Rocket, King Colorado, possibly heading in that direction as well after a guinea. So we've got a really good Australian Cup on our hands. Definitely. And they're placing their horses. Security stakes time here, and it is absolutely no surprise that Mr Brightside is the best backed runner of the afternoon. But again... 
Penciled into a lot of multis across the country, getting very, very short in the market here. $1.45 now. Got as long as $1.60, but very few snap that up. Oh, he's uh, one of the best sources in Australia, if not the best at the moment, Mr. Brightside. He tips himself. It's $1.45 up to you whether or not you take the price, but clearly the horse to beat. He'll only strip fitter for that. First of our group ones on Blue Diamond Stakes Day. Mares have won seven of the last 17. Probabil and Sierra Sue amongst on Mr. Brightside. Well, look, that's what I was looking for. There's no doubt about that. Uh, trying to find a horse that I thought paraded well enough to beat this horse home. And, look, I think they've got a task ahead of them because he's come on with a run under his belt. He looked super. He was his usual cool, calm, collected self. So but Holding it strong at $1.50. Short enough price for punters to shop around, though. So we are seeing some good firming for a couple outside in the market, especially in the each-way price there. Buffalo River, will he make it out of the bungalow up to the front to spoil the party, according to Nigel Carmody? Hopefully for the punters. They're set for the maturity. First of the group ones, and away they go. Nugget a touch slow. Pericles bounce quickly. Led early from Mr. Brightside. Dom to shoot. And out deeper on the track, attrition. Buffalo River's getting into its work. Still two off the lead in the first 300. Two and a half lengths. Nugget followed by Hey Fat Cat and Mutamekas last. Attrition led on the opening corner, but Buffalo River claims it now. Then came Dom to shoot. Three quarters of a length away, Pericles. And Mr. Brightside is fifth one off the fence and about five off the lead. A length and a half to Nugget. Hey, Fat Cat. Two lengths to Munamek to the railway side. 800 metres to go. It's Buffalo River. Three or four lengths in front from Attrition and Dom to shoot. So Buffalo River, the old boy, is going to try and steal this. Five lengths, Dom to shoot. Attrition. Two and a half lengths, Mr. Brightside on the outside of Pericles at the 550. Two and a half to Nugget. Then came Hey, Fat Cat. And last of all is Munamek. Buffalo River approaches the corner at the 400 metres. Still four lengths in front front of Dom to shoot, then came Mr. Brightside, back behind those attrition, and then Pericles to the outer, Buffalo River, as they reach the 250, starting to paddle, Mr. Brightside is eating up the ground now, and Mr. Brightside goes to Buffalo River, Pericles a length and a half off Mr. Brightside, but it's Mr. Brightside clear, and he's going to rack up another one, Mr. Brightside one from Pericles, Buffalo River, Dom to shoot, then Hey Fat Cat, Slicing through the line was Bunamek towards the end nugget and last attrition. He'll overcome any obstacle thrown at him in a race. Not the expected leader, a change in the shape of the race, or one that will just try and run away from them, be six to eight lengths clear. Doesn't matter what complexion it looks like. Mr. Brightside keeps turning up time and time again. And as we mentioned pre-race, the Caulfield 1400 is his playground. What a six months he's had here. The PB Lawrence, the Memsey in the spring, that was his launching pad to almost winning a Cox Plate. And right now he's on a very, very good trajectory towards tilts at defending his All-Star Mile and tackling the Australian Cup, a race that has, of course, been in the keeping of Lindsay Park on many an occasion throughout. He's sixth Group 1, a perfect record here at the Caulfield 1400. He becomes the first horse since Black Heart Bart seven years ago to do the summer double of the awe and the futurity at the Caulfield 1400. Good effort, Pericles. Another Group 1 placing. The, as a yearling, didn't sell for a hell of a lot of money. Continues his incredible run. A sixth Group 1 win yesterday, 1400 metres Caulfield. He's made it his own hutch. He's just too good. Um, any, pretty much any distance, any going. Um, Craig Williams and the association, full marks to Lindsay Park, you know, all the Hayes boys. They're, they've done an unbelievable job. He lived up to his price. So it's an interesting race tactically. Didn't see attrition going forward. That clearly backfired. And then a pretty early move on Buffalo River to step it up. That was expected to a lesser extent, but they certainly put the pedal to the metal early. Stake in the call. Those attrition and then Pericles to the outer. Buffalo River as they reach the 250, starting to paddle. Mr. Brightside is eating up the ground now. And Mr. Brightside goes to Buffalo River. Pericles a length and a half off Mr. Brightside. But it's Mr. Brightside clear and he's going to rack up another one. Mr. Brightside, one from Pericles, Buffalo River, Dom to shoot. Then Hey Fat Cat. Amy's a horse that, Slice. you know, a trainer like you would, would dream of. Eat, sleep, win group ones, repeat. <laughs> and I reckon, I reckon we can say the C word with him. I Champion? Think we, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. I think we can say... <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, I was just that checking that the time. Day, day. Yeah. Sunday, 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> that one, the champion word. I think we can say it, you know. Yeah. I, I really do. I think you... Um, 
put together a record like that. Well done to the Hayes boys, yeah. their whole team. Um, you know, they've gone out... We'll build a statue of this horse up at uh, <laughs> Yeroa because let's just look back a little bit. You know, David had obviously gone up to Hong Kong. The boys were starting out on their own. They yeah. needed a good horse and... And they're under a bit it, of pressure. Under like a little bit of pressure. Horses, you know, horses were sort of leaving. And, and they've got to do it on their own. And what they've done with him is showcase their talent, yeah. their pedigree, um, and full, full marks them. So, And they're doing a brilliant job. But the pressure was on and they've responded like bright side and I think they really deserve a lot of credit. Probably a little bit of pressure on Craig Williams as well after a bit of uh, unrest yeah. during the week with Jimmy Starr. He's an amazing guy, Craig the Gates here. But attrition going forward, Amy, was a surprise. It didn't work. I don't mind that. I don't mind trying something different. It seemed strange with him though, because he was first up, and in a race where it looked like there was a bit of pressure on paper. Yeah, they're brave, but you can't really take much away from Mr. Brightside. He's the horse to beat. He's the current favourite for the All Star Mile, and he looks tough to beat. We know that Buffalo River's got that invite off his placing last start. Pericles got the invite yesterday for for running second. Can anything? Out of this race, turn the tables on Mr. Brightside in an all star mile? No. Brighter Jenny, maybe. Brighter Jenny was great. And um, she was a bit fitter, isn't she, next time? She's going to have the same sort of tactics. But uh, yeah, I think it's really down to those two. I say that, and Riff Rocket's very interesting. I mean, good I think, horse. yeah, I, 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 I have a really good time. But yeah. Brightside's so hard to knock. Mm. He's so hard to knock, really. He's little bit earlier so no major shake up here and a pretty fair race all the way through four dollars forty into three dollars ten there for coleman and your best back by a reasonable margin considering the price difference lady of camelot sitting at four dollars twenty coming in from seven dollars at fifty high octane tipped by many six dollars fifty out to seven the traders not so keen to start of this morning at the five dollar fifty quote and nisa ten dollars out to thirteen but again a pretty 2015 and in her eyes is the only runner in the field side by a former winner she, of course, being a daughter of Danny O'Brien's star in Star Witness. Jane, one of the most enjoyable mounting yards, I'd imagine, on an annual... Standing group of two-year-olds, probably one of the best blue diamond fields I've assessed. I've gone with a couple that I think have just built beautifully to a race like this. Eight goes on top, high octane. Uh, he's just improved every time he stepped out on race day. I think he gets to a peak to... 40 at the top there, but still easily the best back runner in this race. The ones that Jane mentioned right there, high octane, has been getting some good support as well. Into $7 now. Hayasugi, 14 there, high octane. 6.50 out to four, out to seven dollars there but he's the third best back runner along with Lady Comelette being the second there but down the bottom Matisse who was just mentioned is quite the liability there for sports bet $20 into 18 so not a massive move. Racing Coleman away fairly stay focused out quite well with Hayasugi and Spywire towards the outside and Lady of Camelot zooming through so it's Spywire leading Lady of Camelot three links Anisa stay focused Koryanagi two for the back is high octane and next in the field on the inside is Dublin down onto the course proper Coleman's in that group of horses followed by Matisse picking off a couple a length and a half away Hayasugi in her rise followed by Flyer Zesty Man Fearless well back traffic warden Ruta Royale is last. By wire at the 600, three quarters. Lady of Camelot. A link stay focused. Koryanagi, then Anisa. Next is High Octane getting closer. Three or four off the lead from Matisse Dublin down Coleman. Then came Hayasugi. Flyer Zesty Man. Fearless Traffic Warden. Lady of Camelot now. Knuckles down. Goes to the front. Puts up a length. Two in second place. By wire stay focused. Anisa. Then Koryanagi. High Octane is next. Can't pick up. It's Lady of Camelot at the 200 metres in front. Getting a little bit weird. Koryanagi stay focused and Hayasugi the filly is flying home. Lady of Camelot, Hayasugi's got her! Hayasugi's won it. Hayasugi from Lady of Camelot, Kurosanagi. Photo for four. We've got Traffic Warden uh, up there with also Anisa and stay focused behind the Matisse and Spywire. Fearless Dublin down. High Octane couldn't come on flyer. Coleman and then came Ruta Royale and at the tail of the field Zesty Man and pulling up quickly in her eyes. History for Clinton McDonald, Jamie Carr and Hayasugi who becomes just the second filly in the history of the Blue Diamond to run the table, win the preview, win the prelude, win the big one. Midnight Fever did it in 1987, and two years later, Clinton's father, Ross, who was a fixture, he was Caulfield royalty, 
He trained Corza to win the Blue Diamond. She went on to win a Golden Slipper. His son, some 35 years later, has won one of Caulfield's most Please. iconic races. These will be incredible emotional scenes. And Jamie Carr, who just missed out on revolution, who just missed out on revolutionary miss in this race two years ago, has added the Blue Diamond to her growing CV of Group 1s. Lady of Camelot, so gallant. Everything we saw, saw her do in the Whedon Stakes was transferred to Caulfield. But Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott, Gay's gone close again. Her fourth placing in a Blue Diamond. 14 and, 14 and 12 will complete what is a Phillies top four in the Blue Diamond Stakes. Clint Hutchinson, well done. Hayasugi on top, what a fine. Jamie Carr's won the Blue Diamond with Hayasugi. I still can't believe it. Like, this filly, I don't know how she does it. She she gave him plenty of plenty of head start. She was wide again. She just finds a, finds a way. She's just so tough. Amazing. Yeah, I can't... I I was stupid coming in today thinking she was 20 to 1. I just thought her last win was fantastic for a two-year-old to be able to do that. She had no favours, and again today, uh, Jamie's fiancé was trying to knock us down, but anyway, we knocked him off and uh, found the line. It was great. It's just an amazing situation. <coughs> we had a great story with you, Clint, with your mum yeah, and definitely. stepdaughter and all that today, and your father, Ross. I mean, this race means so much to the family. Yeah, most definitely. It's one of those races where I used to say to my mate's history, has got to repeat, you know, Blue Diamond, Golden Slipper, and, uh, you know, we're lucky enough now to have a live chance and I think the Golden Slipper will really suit this filly and, uh, you know, just the way that she attacks the line, you know, for a young two-year-old, uh, her tenacity is second to none. What difference does this... ...saw that run and won yesterday. Many thought it was probably the deepest and, and one of the more open blue diamonds of the last decade. And ultimately, Hutch, it was a filly that had put her hand up right through the preview and, and prelude series. She did what only one other filly has done before her, and, and that was sweep the uh, sweep the series yeah. and, and win the diamond. Yeah, exactly, pointed out by uh, Maddie earlier. This was a great win. She deserved it. Um, loved the ride from Jamie Carr. Kudos to Clint McDonald. Done a great job with her, and I think he filled those who liked her with confidence, given how tough she'd been in her lead-up, and he'd been very open about all that. The pace was on, as you'd expect. There were some great runs in the race, but we'll take in Maddie's call now and talk about it more shortly. Closer, three or four off the lead from Matisse Dublin down Coleman. Then came Hayasugi Flyer, Zesty Man, Fearless Traffic Warden, Lady of Camelot now, knuckles down, goes to the front, puts up a length, two in second place, Spywire stay focused, Anisa, then Koryanagi, High Octane is next, can't pick up, it's Lady of Camelot at the 200 metres in front, getting a little bit weary, Koryanagi stay focused, and Hayasugi, the filly, is flying home, Lady of Camelot, Hayasugi's got her, Hayasugi's won it. Hayasugi from Lady of Camelot, Kurosanagi. Photo for four. The Phillies, the first four over the line there. And Matty, you're one for, for racing history. Clint McDonald, 35 years after his father, Ross McDonald, won it with mm. uh, with Corza. He gets a, uh, a star filly of his own. Yeah, and you can even go further back with his grandfather, Bon Hoisted. So it's a, it's a family tradition over three generations in uh, the Blue Diamond. And it's a pretty young race, the Blue Diamond. So it's been a family uh, affair. And I thought that was just superb what she did yesterday. She was four and five wide on the final turn. They've run, what, 34 and five or something in the last 600. She's had to go probably 33, eight or something in the last, uh, you know, 600 metres up the middle of the track, which was against the grain of the day. That was the performance of the day by far. Big win. And, you know, the runner-up, Amy, was very good. And later, Camelot, she went... I didn't see Spywire leading so fast and she absorbed some pressure and still looked a bit new. But you can't deny that the winner was outstanding. She sat back off them, rounded them up, covered a bit of ground. It was almost a carbon copy, actually, of a win in the prelude. It was very, yep. very similar. And mustn't she must just have the most unbelievable constitution, too, because she's handled her racing. Jane said in the mounting yard, like, she... Is allegedly eats the house down and she still was carrying plenty of condition. Beautiful ride by Jamie. She, was, she said also she was trapped sometimes with young, inexperienced horses. See, she even just cornered that little bit awkwardly. But uh, Jamie was able to keep her balanced um, and then once she did straighten up, she really hit the line well. But she said it was a carbon copy of, uh, of the prelude and it was because I know Roy Higgins once famously said that uh, times are only for the greyhounds chasing the lure, but... Um, 
on times, they were an even bunch. Yes. They were an even bunch. And Lady of Camelot obviously threw in a bit of a curveball from the, the Sydney form, mm -hmm. but uh, she's just run up to her form from the couple of weeks earlier. As did Kiryanagi, who had a similar run in transit as well, back on the inside, and, and uh, she kept on nicely. And they're going to have a future, I think, some good post-race... Comments. Let's have a look at the aerial shot. We love this. Hopefully, plate. It's all happening here at Sportsbet Caulfield. And King's Gambit is your favourite and a well backed one at that. But it is pretty even money spread across the board as we move further down the page. The second best backed in this race at the moment, and by a bit of a distance here, is Benedetta sitting at $8.50 there. Really, really good support. Only the $9.50 into $8.50 fluctuation, but Benedetta, the second best back. For the Oxley clan, what a good win. Sharipa would be here and a great story as well. $14.9 into seven. The punters are well and truly on board. Ray Magnerio. For racing here at Caulfield for many years, the second last race out of it, the final group one we'll have out of the Caulfield Mounting Yard is the Sportsbet Oakley Plate. Jane, the best of the powerful balls of muscle was? Oh, look, a tough mounting yard. I've gone with Sharifa, and that just comes down to the fact that I think he's a horse that genuinely keeps improving and keeps improving in a racing campaign. He's done really well since the last... Sharifa has been getting good support, along with Benedetta, who we mentioned before was the second best backed in this race. This remains the same, and we've just seen that price tick in at such there. King's Gambit, of course, up the top. has just got back to the opening quote there of $4, but still in from the 4.40 this morning. Benedetta, 9.50 into 7. Sharifa, good luck to the Oxlade clan. $14 into 8 there. And they stand, he holds them. Najem Sahail fractionally. Najem Sahail away fairly. Lempica out well. Hypothetical fired out being used up with Brood and Ellen Q. Man and King's Gambit away quickly over on the fence. So it's hypothetical leading Q. Man followed by Brood and Ellen King's Gambit and also out deeper Najem Sahail. Then came Mornington Glory recommendation. Ray Magnerio midfield. Skew if on the rails from Benedetta Lempica. A length chain of lightning. Well back as Fura Kalos and Lasha Ripper. Hypothetical 5.50 out by a length. Najem Sahail, who's three wide. Q-Man next from Brudanel. A length away recommendation passed by Mornington Glory from King's Gambit. Benedetta, well back, Ray Magnerio, Lem Skew if Chain of Lightning as Fura Kalos and Sharipa. Hypothetical 250 metres to go. Q-Man's getting closer on the outside. King's Gambit runs up behind them, just needs an out. Q-Man up to Hypothetical. Then King's Gambit recommendation and Kalos right down the outside. Q-Man up to Hypothetical. They're here in unison, Q-Man, Q-Man I think has won it from Hypothetical, then came a wall of them, we had Benedetta, Brudenell, Mornington, Glory, and they were followed by King's Gambit, many chances for third, then Skewiff, Recommendation, Chain of Lightning, Sharipa, Najem, Sahail, Asfuralem, Picker and Kalos, it'll be just on the line, Q-Man. Shane and Cassie Oxlade have done it. They brought two to the race. The Border Raiders in Q-Man and Sharipa. And it's their second stringer of sorts, who's now a Group 1 Oakley Plate winner, steered by Harry Coffey from Gate 2 to victory. The Adam Stakes winner on Australia Day. A month later, he's a Group 1 winner, Q-Man. The son of Mitt Lane, something that James Seferis can certainly put in greater context but Q-Man has just seen off Hypothetical and Mornington Glory in a great battle to the post in what was a typically fast run, compelling, don't know where to look edition of the Oakley Plate. They run one over... Doing the steering here for Shane and, and Cassie Oxlade. Hutch, it was that sort of race, you know, traditional handicap, big spread in the weights. So many key chances. Don't know how many people thought that Q-Man was a legitimate contender, albeit he was coming off a, uh, a stakes win at, uh, at Caulfield. Take us through the race. Yeah, look, it was a, a big win, and it was dominated by those horses on speed. It was not, wasn't a bad place to be yesterday. Generally, um, I'm not sure, you know, it's, uh, that can be the case at Caulfield, but Hypothetical did what she does. Um, she was extremely brave. You've got a feel for connections going down by a small margin. But the surprising bit for me was that they just drew clear of the rest of the field. Group one handicap. These two deserve their spots, and um, we'll take in your call now, Matty. Hypothetical 250 metres to go. Q-Man's getting closer on the outside. King's Gambit runs up behind them, just needs an out. Q-Man up to Hypothetical. Then King's Gambit recommendation. And Kalos right down the outside. Q-Man up to Hypothetical. Their heads in unison. Q-Man. Q-Man, I think, has won it from... Was a second career Group 1 win for jockey Harry Coff.
Classy guys, this is the, the overhead shot, and, and we can, you know, talk, spoke about uh, Sharipa. He was a horse that the market of his two chances probably favoured. He was probably put out of business early in the race. Well, that's him going back to last now. He's run a massive race. Um, he just didn't step well, and that's just his highlights in these races. You just need absolutely everything to go right, don't you, Amy? And just a little half-step wrong here or there or something ahead of you, and you can be put on the back foot. To be getting beaten two lengths when Sharipa's last there, it's been a big effort. Absolutely, and it isn't funny to... And it's just an iron horse and terrific performance. Hutch, what did you make of Asfura? Because obviously the, the target's Royal Ascot, and usually we see her a bit closer than where she was, but she's finished off all right. Yeah, I thought she ran really well. Um, I liked her on the day and, you know, um, a couple of people reminded me of the record carrying weight in the race isn't great and I made a mistake there, but I think you have to be, you know, she's performed admirably in probably different conditions where she's not having to concede weight to everyone else. Mm. You know, she can turn it around. She'll run well at Royal Ascot mm. if they decide, or well, they are going. She will so. run well. What do we do with King? She'll run well at Royal Ascot mm. if they decide, or well, they are going. She I think will so. run well. What do we do with King's Gambit? He's a horse that has always carried a, a bit of a boom. He, he jumped favourite yesterday. First thoughts on his run? I think he had every chance. I was worried about the inside barrier, but the run actually presented itself and he got a nice run in behind. That's um, him and obviously right on the rail in the red and black colours. So he got a beautiful trip. He chased the first two past the post. Um, look, he's only seventh career start. We can't forget that, can we? He's, yeah. he's lightly raced. He'll get better. He only carried 50 kilos, that said. No, well, I, I think out of the race, I mean, um, the other one that was a little bit unlucky, Benedetta, probably just marginally held up, ran really well. I think Jason Warren's got plenty to look forward to with her. But ultimately, there wasn't much sort of between... I mean, apart from the first two, Amy, there was, you know, between, what, third, between tenth or something, there was not much of a margin. No, I think all credit to the winner, and obviously hypothetical mm. was as well. I think it was really but great I think defeat. fair to say, I don't think the new market winner was in the Oakley Plate. Speaking of the, the new market, the news from Tiakia yesterday that it's still in the picture for Imperatrice. She's going to run that day, whether it's in Melbourne or Sydney, I guess we'll find out. But... Yeah, is it fair to say that, you know, we would probably, you know, it would be surprised to see anything out of that race, you know, beating in Perry. We're looking at quite the decent pay. Ah, still alive in the quaddy. Hopefully you find that fat way home. But it's Revolutionary Miss, who is your favourite. $4, just holding that price there. Ticked into $3.90, back out to $4. No, back into $3.90 now. A bit of a roller coaster. Eternal Flame, $4.20, just holding that price. Va Links off in fifth, and Taraf completed the top six. Flying Mascot and Rich Hip. Standing here delivering the pick of the yard, but we've got a beautiful new parade ring to step into. Uh, I'm with Party for One here. I think she's the one that's taken really nice improvement between mounting area, but we'll go with it anyway. Party for One has been very well supported with us here at Sportsbet, Jane. Punter's very much looking for something outside in double figures to be able to look for here. Eternal Flame is your new favourite, albeit just tick. Bit of action in close, signal from behind and racing, and it was a beautiful line to end the day. Shuffle Dancer goes back to third last next to Eternal Flame and Vasilia. Rota Arataki being used up will lead the race from Revolutionary Miss from the outside. Ellie up to second. Party for one will box seat and running by behind her. A length away, Vagrant Forbidden City. A length and a half, Vasilia Shuffle Dancer and Eternal Flame as last as they run off the back section. 900 metres to go. It's Rota Arataki. Three quarters of a length to Revolutionary Miss now a half length off the lead as they settle a length and a quarter party for one and then came running by a length and a quarter Forbidden City outside of Vagrant Midfield on the fence two lengths away Vasilia Shuffle Dancer and last Eternal Flame with a lot to do from there wrote to Arataki 600 metres to go from Revolutionary Miss they've come up for air a length and a half running by party for one then Forbidden City Vagrant two lengths Vasilia now Eternal Flame gets going from the back and Shuffle Dancer last around the bend at the 350. It's Rote to Arataki, led from Revolutionary Miss on the outside. D hasn't moved yet. Two lengths running by Party for one from Vagrant, then Eternal Flame. Revolutionary Miss at the 150 took over from running by Rote to Arataki, then Forbidden City. Revolutionary Miss going well. The Mayor in form, and Revolutionary Miss won it from running by Vagrant. Photo four, Eternal Flame, Rote to Arataki, then Forbidden City. Next to finish party for one in company with Vasilia and a long last shuffle dancer. Michael D closes out what's been again a fruitful blue diamond day. Didn't quite get there in one of the big ones. He was done in the photo with hypothetical against Q Man 40 minutes ago on an Oakley plate. He was aboard Campion Essa earlier on this afternoon to take out 
the Peter Young as she perhaps charts a path towards an Australian Cup and revolutionary miss, just simply one of the big ones. He was done in the photo with hypothetical against q -Man 40 minutes ago on an Oakley plate. He was aboard Campion Essa earlier on this afternoon to take out the Peter Young as she perhaps charts a path towards an Australian Cup and revolutionary miss, just simply.